Raiders and their run and shoot offense are lighting up the scoreboard two to one over opponents while others have tried and failed with the run and shoot Houston's Warren Moon has made the Oilers the NFL's top passing team but it is expensive Moon absorbing huge hits even while the Oilers score and win so far this year Moon has bounced back each time his quiet toughness influencing Houston's quick start will Moon endure can he inspire the five and one Oilers to be the AFC's best NBC Sports presents the National Football League. Today, it's the Houston Oilers versus the Miami Dolphins. Over 60,000 fans expected today at Joe Robbie Stadium, some 16 miles northwest of downtown Miami. A thunderstorm that hit about a half hour ago, dropping some heavy rain, but that has subsided. The lights are on. We're ready to go, and it's the Houston Oilers 5-1 and one against the 3-4 and four Dolphins. Dick Enberg with Bill Walsh. Bill Walsh, a man who was not uh, all that enamored. kind or enamored of the run-and-shoot offense, but certainly has always uh, uh, envied the talents of Warren Moon. Well, if anybody can make the run and shoot to the Super Bowl, it's Warren Moon. He may very well be the best quarterback in football today, and this run and shoot calls for passes thrown across the field, 40 and 50 yards on a line. Warren Moon can do that. But the indoor Oilers have had trouble historically playing outside. They did win last week in New York. Uh, but with the rain today, will that affect uh, their offense? Will it help Miami? Well, I think that the run and shoot is more sensitive to weather, and it's the footing that makes a difference, Dick. The soft footing, because the receivers are asked to change direction, read coverages, stop, start, and with a soft field, we'll see what happens. Veteran wide receiver of the Miami Dolphins, Mark Clayton, told us yesterday the games the past couple of weeks have been serious games. He said, we are now in critical condition. This is a must-win game for Miami if they are to entertain any hopes of a playoff. They lost only four times all of last year. They've already lost four this year. Well, Miami is going to have to make a complete, they're going to have to resurrect their team this week. All phases of the game are going to have to improve. And once again, it's Dan Marino who's going to have to go head-to-head -head with Warren Moon. And Dan's going to have to have a great day for Miami to stay in this game. And you see Marino working on a week's worth of mustache, something that uh, he said he has not in tried before. We'll get reviews on that as the season progresses. Really in the hands of Marino, the brilliant passer of Miami. When you compare the talents of these two teams, there's a good reason why the Oilers on the road are favorites today. Marino's the one man that could make up the deficit. So pressure on him as the Oilers will receive the opening kickoff. Pete Stojanovic to Alan Pinkett and Gary Brown. Stojanovic with a great leg. Aims it toward Pinkett, the former Notre Dame All-America at the 7th, the 20, and slips down at the 24-yard line. The offense guided by Warren Moon. The run and shoot, actually more shoot than run. Mags, Munchak, Matthews, a pro bowler at center, Flannery, a rookie, and David Williams, a big offensive line. Moon, indeed, number one. Pinkett with the four wide receivers, Jeffries, Hill, Givens, and Duncan, and that is their uh, regular set as well as their uh, third and long. The run and shoot of Jack Pardee in his second year as the head man of the Oilers. Coming from the University of Houston. It's Drew Hill, the veteran in motion. Moon comes out throwing. It's to Ernest Given. Shirt tailed at the 30-yard line. A gain of five against the Dolphin defense that has been much too generous. Oglesby, Turner, and cross the front three. E.J. Jr. will come in as a linebacker, and this is the set against the run and shoot as they go with all those defensive backs. Bobby Harden is a safety playing linebacker. Magruder for the injured Vesty Jackson. J.B. Brown, Jarvis Williams, Oliver, a rookie Green and Langford loaded up with DBs against Warren Moon. Second and five. Can't turn the corner, and that'll bring up third and two. If it's any softer, I think we're going to see a, a material difference in what the run and shoot can do. Right now, I think they can function on this field, but one more 
hit of that rain, where it's about a half an inch in 15 minutes, I think you'll see a dramatic difference in what the run and shoot can get done. Now Moon trying the run. The Dolphins almost daring Houston to run as they've loaded up against the pass. Third and a short two. You see the wide receivers signaling out, echoing out at Audible. It's to Pinkett, and he may have just gotten the first down. He needed to hit the 35, and they mark it right on the 35. Alfred Oglesby, who played in Houston for Jack Pardee, made the tackle. Well, every one of these first downs are critical to Miami because they've got to somehow get field position and control the ball. So any play like this can be disastrous. And it didn't appear he made it, but by the time they placed the ball, he'd made it maybe by six inches. Pardee has brought discipline to this organization. And they sorely needed discipline. And of all the people they could have picked, this is the right man. Influenced by Fair Bryant as a collegian and George Allen as a pro. On first down. Moon down the middle, wide open as Givens, and Givens has 10 more yards as the former Louisville star has his 28th catch of the season. Bobby Harden, who played here in Miami for the Hurricanes, made the tackle. The inside people in the run and shoot, the slot men, so to speak, are always ready to cross shallow to the other side of the field, and zone defenders over there have to be alert for it. At that time, they were just too late getting to him, so... If those zone defenders on the far side of the field don't see those crossing receivers coming, Houston will control the ball all day. That's Hill, the veteran from Georgia Tech, in motion. And it will delay play to Pinkett. And he picks up seven and as he moves into Miami territory to the 48-yard line. E.J. Jr., the tackler. And Jack Party wants to control the ball, and they'll go to the run if there aren't enough defenders within the tackle box, so to speak. That time, Miami had five men uh, directly opposite the five men from Houston. So, consequently, they're going to run that draw play all day. Pinkins' rushing yardage has declined each game since game one, and last week had only a minus one yard. There he is, Lorenzo White at the uh, heavy load. They'll share duties today. Second and short. Pinkett again. And he pulls his way to the 43. Another first down. So a consistent drive off the opening kickoff by the Oilers, engineered by Warren Moon. Again, the, Dick, the, the Miami team is saying, run the ball. We're going to stop the pass. And that time again, just five men against five potential blockers. And Warren Moon's going to call a run play virtually every time he sees that until Miami can stop it. But I think it's good strategy. They don't want Warren Moon throwing the ball today. They want the running game to beat them, if anybody's going to do it. All right, let's look at that defensive line, as Moon does as well. Four defensive linemen, one linebacker. A couple of DBs up on the line of scrimmage. Moon. Intercepted. He overthrew his man, and it's Lewis Oliver. The former Florida star to the 40, and the Dolphins with a turnover. Oliver was simply playing center field. He was covering no one. A Warren Moon simply threw the ball. It got out of control. Maybe it's wet, but clearly over everybody's head to the center fielder. Meanwhile, he had two other shallow receivers wide open. Big break, big break for Miami. Everybody's different. Different looks, different tastes, different lifestyles. That's why Geo offers you a choice. Geo Metro, Geo Storm, Geo Prism, and Geo Tracker. So pick your favorite and get to know Geo. Right around the corner at your Chevrolet Geo dealers. You'd think a country that could put a guy on the moon in a sushi bar on every corner could make a great non-alcoholic brew. Coors Cutter. Coors did it. Now even a herd cutter or a word cutter can enjoy a Coors Cutter. Everything about the taste says beer, but the label, that says brew. Lawyers, go figure. 
So whether you're a butter cutter or a clutter cutter, enjoy the clean cut taste of a Coors cutter. Coors Nothing cuts it like a cutter. cutter. Those figures for the meaning? You don't like them? Some things are so reliable, they seem invisible. Confusing, right? They're fine. For the last nine years, Canon has been the number one choice for copiers of uncompromising quality. No, really, tell me. You can tell me. They're fine. I'm your friend. Tell me. And if you haven't noticed, that's exactly how it should be. <laughs> We're not friends anymore. From compact to advanced digital color to high-speed copying systems, the choice is Canon. Call 1-800-OK-CANON. Since we became employee-owned, I think there's a far greater commitment to providing good quality service. Roving Rapid Return is really fast. I meet you at your car, push a couple of buttons, hand you a receipt, and you're out of there. So why rent from anyone but an owner? On the turnover, Miami starts at the 39. Richmond Webb, a rookie pro bowler. Widener, Ulanek, Galbraith, and Dennis. The offensive line, Marino with Sammy Smith and Tony Page. The Marks, Duper and Clayton outside, and Greg Beatty, the tight end. Marino will start with a pass, incomplete to Mark Clayton, deflected, I believe, by Johnny Meads, the linebacker. And there's your interceptor for Miami, his second of the season, third-year man, Lewis Oliver. He returned it 22 yards. Oliver, by the way, is getting better by the game. He finally will become, most likely, the best safety man in football. Fuller has seven sacks to lead the AFC. Childress, Smith, and Jones complete the front three, and there's their linebackers and defensive backs. Chris Dishman, number 28, the left corner, has been brilliant. Five straight games, he's been involved in the turnover. Four interceptions and a fumble recovery. Stay on the ground, and surprise with Sammy Smith, who has nearly 10, before Bubba McDowell, the safety man, can trip him up. This is what Miami has to do. Mix the run and the play pass. This is taken straight up the middle with a lead blocker. And, of course, Tony Page, one of the best lead-blocking fullbacks in the league. If they can get chunks of yardage like that, they'll be fine. What they have to do is get field position before they do punt the ball. Of course, they'd like to score, but they can't give the ball up in the middle of the field. Only 16 yards against Kansas City as Smith returned. His longest run was four. That one was for nine. Second and one. Smith, first down. He got to the 50, and that's all he needed. Boy, did that take an effort by Smith. Because Childress and Doug Smith, both defensive linemen, penetrated, and he had to hop over one of them to get the first down. Ball just into Houston territory. So it's so critical to consume time and get field position. That's how Miami can win it. They can't turn the ball over, and they can't pump from their end of the field very often because that offense of Houston's will take it in for six. No score, first possession for the Dolphins. Nine minutes left, opening quarter from the 49. Smith again. Hit in the backfield and drop for a loss at the 50-yard line as veteran Sean Jones knifed in for the tackle. Our first 10-minute ticker, no score in those games early. And New England has just scored against Minnesota. New England, the only team to beat Houston this year. That surprising win up at Foxborough. Brilliant play on the final play of the game to upset the Oilers. Something ominous, Dick. Richmond Webb was stuck by Sean Jones that time. Uh, that's a great matchup. One of the great matchups of the year between two linemen. But that time, Sean Jones won the matchup. Second down, 11. Smith, well read by the defense. It was Al Smith, the inside linebacker, making the tackle after a gain of a yard. Well, it's a pressure defense. Now, here's that matchup we talked about, 78 Webb, and Jones is going to just go, oh, this is the pass play. So he's going to jump high, and, and one of his thoughts, Jones thought, was to put squeeze in on Marino and jump to bat the ball. But look at these two guys, huge. Look at the sleeve length. 39, 39 inches. You probably won't see that kind of a matchup. 39 inch sleeve length all year between two people. And Webb uses those long arms as a pass blocker and Jones says I'm his match. I like to get my arms into the blocker. We'll see who wins this boxing match. Marino well protected and throws short to Mark Clayton who had a sea of blue jerseys around him and 
Dolphins will have to kick it away. Dan just has to start hitting those passes. In looking at the tapes of last week's game, he missed it any number of passes downfield with a receiver running at full speed. And at that time, the ball bounced about 10 yards short. So this must mean that Dan's not in proper position to throw the ball and is rushing his throws. He's not relaxed. Reggie Roby with those big numbers, 45 and a half yard average, and that one's going to go right through the end zone. Wow. So they'll take the touchback. Will the Oilers at the 20 yard line? Timeout was 7 13 remaining in a scoreless first period. Oh, he looked scarier 25 years ago. Did I? You looked scared. I don't know. I thought I hit it well for an innocent groom. You were innocent for the 60s. Any regrets? None. You? Just one. What? That I waited 25 years to give you this. The 25th anniversary diamond. A brilliant celebration of a loving marriage. I've got goosebumps. Well, you've given me goosebumps for 25 years. <laughs> Chevy trucks. The trucks you can depend on. The trucks that last. It's gone. But it isn't. Bix introduces an incredible new cough drop. It's gone. But it isn't. A cough drop so powerful, it keeps on working even after the drop is gone. It's extra strength VIX, a new kind of VIX with twice the VIX vapor medicine to relieve your cough and help your scratchy throat and stuffy nose feel better even after the drop is gone. New extra strength VIX, extra strong to work even after it's gone. NBC Sports coverage of the National Football League is brought to you by Chevy Trucks, the trucks you can depend on, the trucks that last. By new Coors Cutter non-alcoholic brew. By Norelco patented lift and cut shavers. We make clothes comfortable. And by First Brands Corporation, makers of Prestone Advanced Formula Antifreeze. Blue skies now after the rain that preceded the game. The Houston Oilers' second possession. The first drive uh, halted on an overthrow by Warren Moon, intercepted by Lewis Oliver. They start from the 20. The receivers are signaling the pass pattern. Oh, they're in the draw. And Pinkett is met in the backfield. A two-yard loss, E.J. Jr. Now, that was an audible by Moon. When he saw that front, he was getting a nickel defense. And that nickel defense to him meant run the ball. He had a, the middle linebacker as a defensive back, so he ran his draw play. And you see Matthews come right out on that number 45, uh, Bobby Harden. But he'll audible. Meanwhile, the receivers were signaling that the play had been changed. So when you see those receivers in your picture, Using arm gestures, they're calling the audible after Warren Moon does. So A.J. Jr. off a stunt right into the hole to make the tackle. Second and 12. Moon incomplete. No flag. It appeared that Jeffries was manhandled before the ball arrived. No penalty. J.B. Brown on the coverage, and he was indeed covering Jeffries. Well, Brown was not forced back. He was right on Jeffries. When Jeffries turned on his hooking pattern, Brown was right on his hip. Now, we see it at the uh, middle of the screen, straight up the field, and Brown is right there, right there. Now, oh, that's tight. I think they're, that's a good play, good defensive play. Both going for the ball. The Oilers last year led the NFL in third down efficiency, almost 52%. This season, they're even better, 54-plus. The run is there if Houston wants it. A three-man line. Moon needs 12. Oh, oh, almost intercepted and then caught by Drew Hill. Oh, my. It went right through the hands of Vesty Jackson, who might have had a touchdown, squirted right to Drew Hill, who picks up a freak first down. If they lose this game, if Miami loses, they'll look at this play. This is seven points. And then for to have it to go to Drew, now that's quick hands by Hill. 
But there's the kind of play the Dolphins are going to have to make. Excellent coverage, cuts underneath his man, and lets the ball slip through his hands. And for Drew Hill, who has set a Houston career reception record, that's his 412th and runs his streak to 67 consecutive games with at least one reception. Uh, Drew Hill is the premier receiver on this team. He hasn't caught as many balls, but he's the guy they'll go to in the clutch. First down at the 34. Moon, a little deeper this time, and Jeffries can't hang on as J.B. Brown in to get a hand on it. Brown is there. He's there today, I'll tell you because he had good position until the ball was thrown and he broke on it and made the play. So he's giving his people trouble and Jeffries after last week with a tremendous uh, game against the Jets. You now you see him break on the ball, it's in the air and he's right on the money. The sideline uses it and it just makes it too tough for Hayward to catch the ball. and career yards with his last catch in motion. The draw again, Pinkett tripped up. David Griggs, third-year backer from Virginia, makes the tackle. They were wanted to run the ball. They wanted to run the ball against the nickel defense. Miami is playing a nickel defense, and, and there's a, this man is a defensive back. This is Bobby Harden. So the natural thing to do is run, but look, they ran a line stunt and left the running back nowhere to go. Nowhere to go. A beautiful job. If they can get that done with just those four defensive linemen, they're going to have a, a pretty good defensive day. Moon looking now for three out of three on third down. Thrown behind Tony Jones. As Moon was feeling the pressure, Jeff Cross for the Dolphins. Moon wanted Ernest Givens on the far side of the field, and he simply waited too long for Givens to get open. He waited too long. Now, Givens will be the second man in, in the slot coming down the field. Moon will sprint to his left, and he wants to throw back. Now, he springs to his right, and he sees this hole right here. He can't get the ball to him. Now, that pressure by Emmy is really surprising me, Dick. I didn't think they could get this done. Montgomery's punt, end over end toward the sideline. Scott Miller is going to let it bounce. And downed at the 26-yard line, so Miami has held Houston on its first two tries here in the first quarter. Wouldn't it be great if there was a country club just for regular guys? And a few things were changed, like monster carts allowed on course. Water hazards shall no longer be hazardous. Spikes encouraged in the clubhouse. Only really great premium beer served. Like cold filter Keystone and Keystone Light. Bottle beer taste in a can. Hey, I'm in the sand again. All right. Nice shot. Thanks. Wouldn't that be great? When her car needed a new battery, you got the heavy-duty model. When the tires started to wear, you spent a little more for the good ones. And even though the brakes could have made it a while longer, you said replace them. And now that fall's here, you're using Prestone Antifreeze. Its patented formula exceeds every performance standard set for the antifreeze industry. For corrosion and freeze-up protection, Prestone, we make it better than we have to. For some very good reasons. Last year, the average price of a car with standard anti-lock brakes was over $40,000. But today, all that's changed. Because we understand the real value of safety. We put anti-lock brakes standard on more models than anyone. Even on our least expensive Cavalier. Chevrolet. The heartbeat of America. The cars more people depend on. That's today's Chevrolet. It took all day. But they finally came up with one very big idea. What do you bet they printed on a laser jet from Hewlett Packard? Joe Robbie Stadium in New Orleans seeking uh, unbeaten first half of the season takes the early lead against the Buccaneers no score in Pittsburgh nor in Indianapolis and New England still leading Minnesota 7 nothing in the first no score here as the sun now uh, blazes down on the damp turf of Joe Robbie 
445 left in the opening quarter and Dan Marino goes to work from his own 26. He's one for three passing only two yards. Underneath to Tony Page and the fullback is to the 33. Page's 18th catch this year. He has carried the ball only twice all season. Now, Page is simply going to release into the flat you know, against his own defense, and Marino's going to hold the ball, let the defenders drop, and then throw it late right to that spot. Now, what I like is Page is going to split those two defensive men. When you catch that ball in the zone, look for the two closest defenders and split them. Don't stop and start trying to make them miss. On second down, Smith is warmed before it can take more than a step as Doug Smith and William Fuller invade the backfield of the Dolphins. And there's Doug Smith. And you talk to the coaches and players of the Houston Oilers. They say he is playing all pro defensive tackle. He is the difference. They have Childress. They have Jones. They have Fuller, their sack artist. But Smith is not 309, he says. He says he's 297. He wants you to understand that. But he's having a great season dominating player you put him next to Childress you've got two of the best defensive tackles in football four yard loss so Marino out of the shotgun Jim Jensen into the game in the backfield with him Marino sidestepping pressure goes long has Duper complete to the 32 yard line now how Marino got that done Duper broke the coverage. Duper's going to release up the field. And now you see the zone coverage slow down and stop. He runs it out and up. But how Marino got him that ball? Because he had all kind of heat on him. And this is vintage Dan Marino. Now Richmond Webb's going to do his job on Jones. Fine job of shoving it past, using those 39-inch reaches. But now Dan Marino, how we saw that so late. And that's why he's one of the great all-time quarterbacks. And, of course, that combination of Clayton that he has not used yet is uh, the best TV duo ever. Out of bounds to Duper. But right over to Duper again with a play pass. Again, Dan is, is getting more pressure this year than I think he's ever had. 14 sacks against Dan Marino. But what I've noted in previous game tapes is he's throwing the ball far too soon, too often. His release is saving him, but he's throwing the ball prematurely far too often. Well, that's self-preservation too, isn't it, Bill? You're darn right. And, and when we mentioned to him in the meeting, he looked at, you notice he looked at me and says, really, you think so? And he sensed it. He hadn't even thought about it. On second and 10. Off a roll. Clayton and a first down at the Houston 18. Now that's well done. Nice call at that point on the field. You don't want to throw an out pattern inside the 30-yard line. The defenders play too tight. So Dan's going to sprint to his right. Clayton's going to lull, start, and then break. Now the ball's in the air. The ball's in the air already. And for Mark Clayton, that catch extends his consecutive streak. The 71 game, 73 counting playoffs, and no a how, Miami record. No matter how good Chris Dishman is, he couldn't have stopped that pattern. He just never saw the ball thrown. Clayton, like Givens of Houston from the University of Louisville. Smith. It was Jeff Alm, number 76, who caught him from behind, and then Sean Jones finished the job. And Childress came from behind the play. They're not doing very well up front right at this moment. Now, you're getting a double team on Jones, and he'll finally come off, but the ball should have been broken up inside earlier. But right across the front, Childress, Fuller, Smith, Jones dominated the line of scrimmage. Smith, who had trouble against Kansas City, five rushes for only eight out yards today. He was booed in the pregame warm-ups by his home crowd. On second down. Incomplete. He was trying to hit his tight end, Beatty, and it hit Lamar Lathan in the helmet. It was just well covered. Dan wanted to go left to Duper. He couldn't get it done. He looked for Clayton. Then finally, Beatty, everybody was covered. It's that simple. 
Eddie, who played at Stanford, has been around, originally drafted by New England in 1986, and Lathan had his head in the right place on that one. Just man-to-man -man right on that tight end, and, and uh, Beatty tried to turn up the field late, but Latham just cut him off. Third and nine. Martin to the right, along with Pruitt, with Duper and Clayton. Now Clayton in motion on the left side. End zone incomplete. He had Pruitt open and threw it too tall. Now those are the plays that Marino made in 1984 to take his team to the Super Bowl. In this case, is the pattern was right. Everything is in good shape. Now you'll notice the ball is going to be thrown over his head. It's just too much for him to handle at that point on the field. And these are the kind of passes that Marino is missing this year, where in years past he would have put right on the money. How do you explain it? I don't know, because he's healthy. He certainly wants to get the ball there. 35-yard attempt by Stojanovic is only missed from 58 for the early lead. And he's right down the middle, and the Dolphins taking advantage of a Marino to Duper 39-yard pass, settled for three, and the lead. The explosive Fighting Irish have ignited the scoreboard in 1991, averaging over 40 points a game at home. Next Saturday, Lou Holtz and company battle the Trojans of Southern Cal in the nation's oldest intersectional rivalry, the Fighting Irish, USC. Notre Dame football is home on NBC. Welcome back. There's uh, Houston offensive coordinator Kevin Gilbride, former head coach at Southern Connecticut. He scripts a few of his plays, not as many as you did, Bill. Well, ten plays, he, he says. He wants to change formations uh, according to the hash mark to see what the defensive adjustments are. And basically, he's calling solid plays, but he wants to know as much as he can, as early as he can in the game. This guy impresses me, Dick. He really does. Much like Mike Holmgren of the 49ers. He's bright, he's sharp, he's poised. And apparently he's very effective with Warren Moon. They have a great relationship. Stojanovic into the end zone. Pat Coleman, former Mississippi star. The little guy trying to get outside. And Michael Magruder there first at the 23-yard line. A reminder tonight here on NBC, Real Life Adventures of Mark and Brian. They'll be singing with the Temptations. Then Erie, Indiana, followed by... Man of the People in Pacific Station and the movie tonight at 9 o'clock. It'll be Barbara Eden and Bill Daly together again and I still dream of Jeannie. That's tonight on NBC. So the Oilers trailing Dan Marino and Miami 3-0 go to work at their own 23. Lorenzo White has replaced Pinkett as the running back. Just a five-man defensive front by Miami. They're inviting the run. But Moon throws on first down underneath. Wide open Drew Hill. And Hill is out to the 45-yard line before Magruder pushes him out of bounds. 22 yards for the Oilers. Again, I had mentioned that uh, the people on the far side of the zone have to be looking for crossing receivers. And that time, uh, Michael Magruder, number 28, was sitting in the zone on the far side of the field. And he left track, left track of what's happening coming from across the other side of the field. You'll see the ball is completed. Now, he's, now he finally finds it and comes back toward it, but by that time, all the damage is done. You have to look for those crossing receivers in the zone. And again, again underneath, and oh. Gibbons drops the ball. He had running room in front of him. Chris Green was beaten on that play. That was man-to-man, -man, and it just wasn't going to be there. He had about four steps that he lost along the way. C. Green can see red if that one had been caught and going the other way. Rookie from Illinois, a seventh round pick. The second that and was ten. Uh, Drew Hill coming from that other side, Dick. And Hill's got beautiful moves, beautiful moves. Of all the receivers on that Houston team, he's the guy that on one-on-one -on -one situations, he has those defensive backs from Houston. In practice, he can take them all apart. Hill hasn't lost much at 36 years of age, the oldest toiler. In the slot left, Lorenzo White hit by Green and others at midfield, a gain of about six. Well, believe it or not, Miami will take that five-yard gain. They'll, they'll almost concede that to you to get Houston in a third and three to four-yard uh, necessary yardage. They, they want this. 
because they can get on tight coverage on the receivers and then hopefully stop a three-yard run. This is where they want Houston. Five times the granddaddy, Don Shula, has to be pleased so far. His team in a 3-0 lead, end of the first quarter at Joe Robbie. This Heisman Trophy moment is brought to you by AT&T, the right choice. In 1973, Penn State's John Cavaletti brought the Downtown Athletic Club to tears when he dedicated his Heisman Trophy to his younger brother, Joey, who suffered from leukemia. If I could dedicate this trophy to him tonight and give him a couple days of happiness, this is worth everything. It's going to be a good week to keep in touch. Remember the day at the ballpark when I hit the ball and ran and slid and uh, and I was thick <laughs> You had a crush on my brother? <laughs> well, she like reminds me so much of you. AT&T Reunion Week starts this Monday, and it's just 11 cents a minute for an out-of-state call. Anywhere in the U.S. from 5 to 11 p.m. So what are you waiting for? Hey, all right. Just 11 cents a minute to reach anyone, anywhere, all week. This is Milan Henelichka, goaltender for the Czechoslovakian Olympic hockey team. He's taken hundreds of stitches, suffered eight fractures, and has even been knocked unconscious. Yet he once went 11 consecutive periods without being scored on. But if you think it's tough to get something by him, wait till you see the guys at the ticket window if you don't have your visa card. Because once again, the Olympics don't take American Express. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. Recently, this couple walked out of Little Caesars with extra pepperoni and extra cheese without paying for it. It's lots of lots of two pizzas with extra pepperoni and extra cheese for $8.98. It's a steal. Lots of lots of. Don Shula and the Dolphins with a 3-0 lead early after one quarter. And Bill Walsh, as you talked with Shula yesterday, I sensed a real empathy. Middle of the year, a 3-4 season. Uh, it wasn't all that comfortable in the room. Not at all, because Don, 42-7, get blown out, beaten, badly humiliated. But the guy is so resourceful. That's why he's the greatest coach in the, in the game today. This team has come back competitive this, this week, where yesterday I thought, no way it can be competitive. Yeah, he said that was the worst he can ever remember being beaten. Kansas City 42 to 7, and that was with the Chiefs letting up in the fourth period. Well, he's got his team back, and at this point in the game, they're certainly playing head to head with Houston. 24 wins from the immortal George Hallis's all time NFL record of 325. And Dan Marino now with some photographs from upstairs, the defenses of the Oilers that he's studying. Meanwhile, it's Warren Moon and Houston with a ball at the Miami 49, third and four as we open the second quarter. Moon, incomplete. Drew Hill, a terrific tackle applied by Jarvis Williams, the safety man. A, the ultimate in how you play the safety position. Now, they know they're only going to throw a pass that can get them three yards, but look at Williams. The ball's in the air. It's basically caught, but that shot right under the chin makes the difference. Now, there are two fine defensive players on the Miami side, and of course, Jarvis Williams and Lewis Oliver at safeties. Yep. That's where the safety comes in. That's the Ronnie Lott kind of hit. Both have had impact. Williams with that tackle, and Oliver with the early interception. Montgomery handles a high snap and just gets it off, and a flag goes down as they ran into the kicker. The return is out to the 22-yard line by Jarvis Williams, but on the high snap, Montgomery hurrying to get the kickoff. One of the Dolphins ran into him. Here's I'd Tom Dooley. Let's see on this one. Because he was juggling the ball. The ball was not firmly in control, and the defender has carte blanche on the guy when he doesn't have control of that ball when he punts it. Hugh Green is number 55. I believe it was Green in on the kicker. Well, that, that was a high snap, out of position, terrible punt, and... and yard penalty when they juggle the ball dick they're carte blanche you go for them. they're free game now you see from the top of the screen coming around the corner and the only reason he's there is we didn't see it the only reason he was there is because the ball was mishandled now against the Houston offense Miami needs every break 
And here's an automatic first down after the uh, all he needed was four and they got five on the penalty. Montgomery saying he didn't exactly crush me but he did make some contact and from Dooley's angle he calls it running into the kicker five yards and a first down at the 44. Boone underneath again and it's complete a little uh, Ernest Gibbons ball was rolled dead no fumble at the 34 and the fans unhappy again. Again, uh, Chris Green trying to cross with Gibbons man to man. And that's really a tough job because Gibbons is so quick. Green just lost the battle on the first couple of steps. The, typically, if you want to stop a guy from crossing the middle, you get inside out on him and jam him at the line so he's late getting there. That time, Gibbons had free access over the ball, and there's no way a play could be stopped. Gibbons says, boy, I'd rather be doing this than what I thought I once was uh, where I was headed and that was in baseball but in high school here in Florida he faced a young right hander named Dwight Gooden who kind of blew a few fastballs by him and he said you know I think football's safer and I might be more successful and boy what a mar model of consistency he has been a rookie caught 61 then 53 60 55 last year 72 and he's on course again this year with 29 currently first down again for the Oilers who trail three nothing. White, the former Michigan State star with flags down, is inside the 20, but that flag in a spot where you suspect holding against Houston. Uh, that time, Matthews at center and Munchak at left guard did a beautiful job of blocking. They just walled people out. There was a... There was a 73 offense. First down. There was a hole there that uh, any back, you and I might have had a chance <laughs> to make a couple of yards on that one. You know, you talked about Ernest Givens. He weighed 125 pounds coming out of high school. Of course, with that weight, the only thing you could do would be to be a featherweight boxer. And uh, so consequently, he had to go to junior college in the northeastern Oklahoma uh, before going to Louisville. But 125 pounds, you, you'd never suspect he'd finally be a Pro Bowl football player. Didn't give up on himself. Another man is the fellow throwing the ball to him, Warren Moon. will chronicle that story. the holding call against David Williams from the 44 first and 20 flags are down moon oh. intercepted by Bobby Harden Harden at the 45 out of bounds at the Houston 47 and I believe it was motion against Houston and the interception then would count all Harden did was back straight up and stand there now he was going to protect against crossing receivers. He was going to be the guy, the enforcer, right in the middle of the field, and Moon didn't see him. He just threw the ball right to Harden. That's two Gibbons passes left. now. Gibbons left the line of scrimmage prematurely. Now you'll see the movement at the top of the screen. Both guys will jump start. And the ball hasn't been snapped. But you'll see Harden just backing up, backing up. Now the ball's thrown 10 yards behind him, and he's right in the middle of the field. Second interception for the Dolphins, who's all it three move. nothing. The white zone is for a new. We didn't design the new Mazda MX-3 to be like apple pie. Jalapenos were what we had in mind. Because if something's not worth having an opinion about, it, it's not worth having. And with the only V6 in its class, the MX-3 is one hot chili pepper. You're not John Doe. Why drive his car? The new MX-3 from the new Mazda. It does feel right! Ah, oh, a new arrival. A tire so special, it may last as long as you own your car. The new XH4. Congratulations. It's a Michelin. Backed by an 80,000 mile Treadwear Limited Warranty. Michelin. Because so much is riding on your tires. Inside your smooth running engine is a torture chamber. And under these grueling conditions, only one leading motor oil meets the world's toughest requirements for viscosity breakdown. Castrol. The only leading motor oil that provides maximum protection against viscosity and thermal breakdown. So use Castrol. Why make things tougher on your engine? Castrol, engineered for today's smaller cars.
Try Super Clean from Castrol, the industrial strength cleaner and degreaser. Attention Murphy Brown fans. This Monday night, Murphy Brown is a repeat. Look what NBC has instead. Danielle Steele's bestsellers. Lee Horsley in Palomino. Patrick Duffy and Linda Carter in Daddy. Two of Danielle Steele's hottest. Palomino Monday, Daddy Wednesday, both on NBC. It's a displeased Warren Moon at his start today. Five out of 12 and two intercepted. Bobby Harden getting the interception to move the ball to the Houston 48 Marino. Guns it downfield. Incomplete intercepted by Bubba McDowell of Houston. And McDowell with blockers is back to the 47 yard line. So excessive plays, interceptions, and Houston has it back. That was as tough a throw as you'd ever attempt to make. Reno had to throw over one defender's head and between two other ones to get the play to work. Now look underneath. Wide open people. Now look, at he had people under him and bracketed on both sides. Al and Smith was the man who deflected it. Meanwhile, Higgs was just wide open underneath. Dan could have gotten his easy first down. It's just forcing that ball in there. But he did that even when he was sensational, throwing 48 touchdown passes uh, from the, this rookie year. Defenses have always said he'll force it in there. Yeah, I guess so. But uh, just not getting it done now. It's, it's too bad. Moon to Lorenzo White. And White breaking tackles down to the Miami 46-yard line from sunny Florida. Let's go to New York and Bob. And then quickly inside to the Hoosier Dome in Indianapolis, where the 0-7 Colts quickly fall behind the Jets. Razzle-dazzle, Johnny Hector with the handoff, then the pitch back to Ken O'Brien. The Colt defense bites Rob Moore wide open, 47-yard touchdown. Dean Biasucci thereafter kicked a field goal for the Colts, so it's 7-3 Jets, Dick. All right, Bob, the Jets and Miami both at 3-4. and four. Such a critical game. You don't want to go to the mid-season break. They have buys next week. Three and five. On second and short. It's White tackled at the line of scrimmage by Jeff Cross, the star from Missouri, pro bowler last year, along with John Offerdahl of Miami. Of course, Offerdahl lost for the season with that Cro knee Cross injury. just comes right off Flannery's block and uh, just breaks to the outside. That's Munchak's block. And I thought Munchak could get better control. But Cross just came right off the block to the ball. Just one man beats the other. It's that simple. Jeff, you look at that picture of him. He says a lot of people mistake him for Bo Jackson as a look-alike. Third down, two and a half. Timeout called by the Dolphins at the 11:43 mark and a critical third and short. They did not like the defense they had on the field. Remember our watch, McCoy? We're here. Oh, check it out. Great. Bye. How about that thingamajig? <laughs> and that doohickey? <laughs> At Lake, you know who. Bring the fish. Let's talk about this one. Here uh, With the uh, what's her names? You'll never forget your big moments with the new UC1. Nice catch, Dan. It's the smallest, slimmest Canon 8mm camcorder yet. Oh, hi, Dan. Why don't you call the who's a what's it? The Canon UC1. You see one, you want one. A safe journey, that's what it's all about out there on the road. So, of course, that's an important goal at Mazda. As we introduce the first of five new cars that improve your sense of control, that are stronger but not heavier, even one with dual airbags already built in. Five new cars just as pure and personal as the Mazda Miata. Drive safely. power of untapped, untouched potential. At GTE, we'll put that power in your hands with a new generation of precision materials. It's the power to make your products faster, stronger, more efficient, and to bring breakthrough ideas to life. We're giving it to others, we can give it to you. The power of a new manufacturing edge. Because at GTE, the power is on. NBC Sports coverage of the National Football League is brought to you by the new Mazda. Mazda, it just feels right. By Xerox, the document company. By Michelin, because so much is riding on your tires. 
and by GTE. At GTE, the power is on. No wonder Miami didn't like the defense. There are ten men. One, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> How am I doing? Seven, eight, nine, ten. And it appears that a cornerback was missing from that alignment because this is a linebacker. I think that's green. And so they had a disaster looking at them, and E.J. Jr. spotted it. So the Oilers go at it, third and a short three. Moon going deep. Tony Jones, the intended receiver, the little 140-pounder from Texas. He was a half-step shy. Michael Magruder on the coverage. Warren Moon wanted Drew Hill in the flat. That's who he wanted. Hill was in the flat. He looked to his outside left and then finally had to go back down the middle and take a shot because it was third down and three. Now, this ball is about two feet overthrown, but third and three, Warren Moon wanted a short pass in the flat that was extremely well covered. So Moon's problems continue. Five for 14. Jarvis Williams back as Greg Montgomery call his last punt. The Dolphins ran into him. Sends this one toward the corner, and it'll go well into the end zone. You know, Dick, I, I'm really, as, a, as a, an observer, really discouraged by the, the punters in the National Football League. Roby kicked one 20 yards out of the end zone. Montgomery just kicks it clearly out of the end zone. And, the, and I know in practice they work and work on kicking out of bounds, rolling the ball down. But they simply just go for the average and kick it clear out of the end zone. On our ITT 10-minute ticker, New Orleans builds its lead. Seattle jumps in front by 10 in the second at Pittsburgh. The Jets, as you just saw, 7-3 over Indianapolis. And Minnesota has tied the Patriots. Here it's 3-0 Miami. 11-28 remaining in the first half. A reminder at the conclusion of today's game, we'll be pres presenting the Avis We Try Harder Award given to the game's MVP. Mark Higgs drilled at the line of scrimmage. Higgs, who started so well, remember the game in Buffalo to open the season was around 150 yards. Doug Smith, outweighing uh, Higgs by more than 100, dropped him at the 20. Smith just waded through that entire offensive line. Uh, Wedner and Ulenick had a shot at him. He just took them right with him to the ball. Boy, is he a force now. And you wouldn't have thought that a year ago. But he's got his weight down. He's active. He's intense. Full sun now. The heat is on here in Miami. Second and ten. Quick throw to the tight end, Beatty, who struggles to the 29. Ball rolled dead. No fumble. It's been whistled dead. Orlando and McDowell in on the tackle. Orlando uh, assaulted Beatty. When Beatty was tackled. Orlando just went for him like he was going to club him. Again, they blitzed in this case. You'll see people, two linebackers coming straight up the middle. And Marino still gets the ball away to his hot receiver, so to speak, Beatty. Why don't you explain the hot receiver in layman's well, terms? You haven't figured that out, Dick? Well, I think I have. I think I have, but maybe if you said it, it would well, just Well, typically, it. there aren't enough blockers for the pass rushers, so some receiver has to be alert to that and look quickly because you can always bring more defenders than you have blockers. Now, so on every play, that for next week? On every play, one receiver knows that he's a hot receiver if there's a blitz. If you don't have enough blockers in position to get the job done. Putting it together. If you needed to put together a lot of information into a finished document of the highest copy quality, copy on both sides, reduce, enlarge, insert tabs, add covers, and make 12 perfectly bound booklets all in about 10 minutes, then there's only one copier that can do the job, the Xerox 5090, the way to put it together. Faxing, scanning, copying, printing. Xerox, the document company. When her car needed a new battery, you got the heavy-duty model. When the tires started to wear, you spent a little more for the good ones. And even though the brakes could have made it a while longer, you said replace them. And now that fall's here, you're using Prestone Antifreeze. Its patented formula exceeds every performance standard set for the antifreeze industry. For corrosion and freeze-up protection, Prestone, we make it better than we have to. For some very good reasons. The white zone is for immediate... We didn't design the new Mazda MX-3 to be like apple pie. 
jalapenos but what we had in mind. Because if something's not worth having an opinion about, it, it's not worth having. And with the only V6 in its class, the MX-3 is one hot chili pepper. Hey, you're not John Doe. Why drive his car? The new MX-3 from the new Mazda. It just feels right! 58% of business travelers change their plans at least once. No problem. Call 1-800-HOLIDAY. Holiday Inn. Stay with someone you know who really knows you. Back in Miami, and a reminder, stay tuned at halftime for the Domino's Pizza Halftime Report. And Bill Walsh, I'm sure this week you've been asked at least 49 times what's wrong with San Francisco, and Bill will share that information with you at halftime. Niners take on Detroit today. Late game. Here it's third and one. Marino, after using the second Miami timeout, gives to Higgs. He has a first down. Former Kentucky star to the 34. That was all Higgs because the penetration up front by Houston was going to just eliminate the chance of making the first down. Look at them come across the line. There's nothing there. So they have to come outside. That time Childers penetrated by a yard, a yard across the line. So Higgs instinctively bounced it. Higgs is only 5'7", but he has a lower body. His thighs, his legs would be a 230-pound back, and uh, he uses them well. He leads Miami almost 500 yards rushing this year, and with that run, he's over 500. On first down, play action. Marino has time wide open. Beatty fumbles, and it is recovered by home. Miami might have gotten in late. Houston had it for a moment. They do. Beatty hit hard in the open field, and Bo Orlando was the man who recovered. The last guy on the team that should fumble is the tight end. And Beatty, the ball's knocked out. He acts as though he's not familiar with, with carrying a ball. The ball is knocked loose from behind. And typically, the tight end has got to have strong hands and have both hands on the ball at all times because he can be hit by anybody. A linebacker coming in from behind, a safety from in front of him. They have to control the ball. It's that simple. And that really hurt because they'd set that play up with a running play. They faked. Beatty was wide open. And he has the ball simply knocked out of his hands. So the turnover is now even. A interception and a fumble recovery for the Oilers. A couple of pass interceptions by the Dolphins. And it's Moon at the Miami 49 trailing 3 nothing with 9-10 left in the half. Well, all hell can break loose pretty quick here with the Houston offense. You just can't give them these kind of breaks. Quickie to Haywood Jeffries, his first catch. J.B. Brown makes the initial hit for Miami at the 42. Jeffries, who leads the NFL with 40 catches coming in. Well, Houston, a couple of interceptions and a couple of punts as the Dolphin defense uh, playing above their numbers in the first uh, seven games of the year. No huddle. Houston's right up. No huddle. They want that same defense on the field. They didn't want Miami to substitute. Come on, Dean. Oh, don't wait. Lorenzo Wright has a first down at the 36-yard line. I believe it was Magruder sitting on the outside as a cornerback should have attacked that play, and he sat back there and waited to see Houston get the first down. You have to attack. Now watch from the top of the left-hand side of the screen. The cornerback isn't there. He's not there. He's not there. Look at him sitting back there waiting. And you just can't play football that way. That's letting everybody else down. You've got to attack the guy with the ball. And, of course, Vesty Jackson is not starting regularly, but Michael Magruder is going to have to play more aggressively than that. First down at the 36. Moon intercepted again. Lewis Oliver has his second. A flag is down, however. The linesman on the near side has thrown a flag. Let's see if it counts. When I it does. What a bad throw. And Warren Moon <laughs> is as good as they get. I guess you can have a bad day, and he's still got plenty of time to come back, but three throws today he's looking left now he just 
at the last second, throws it up for grabs. Now, he's so sure that his receivers uh, can get the job done, in this case, Gibbons, uh, that maybe he's looking for the spectacular catch, but he just turned him through. And Miami, fortunately, is going to ha have safety sitting back there, and they see the ball coming. It's like catching a, foul, a fly ball in center field. Boone, who had one other bad day this year, that was at New England when he was ill. 24-20 Patriots with an upset, and he's not been good thus far in the first half. Six just for reckless. 15. Yeah, just reckless, Dick. Three interceptions in the half. He's been intercepted only uh, six times in the first six games. The throw, Clayton can't make the spectacular catch covered by Chris Dishman, and Clayton thought Dishman had bumped him. Clayton ran an out and up. He started up at about 10 yards. He bent out like it was going to be an out pattern. Dishman's known to take chances and go for the interception. So you see the out move start, and Dishman thought he could go for the interception, but who's to say? He had his arm out and sort of controlling his man. Now Dan Marino had some heat. You see that heat coming from up the field. He finally had to throw it. Now, one, two, three guys hit him as he throws the ball. One of them, Sean Jones, who played at Northeastern, played with the Raiders before traded to Houston, and he still matched up against that young tackle, Richmond Webb. The give to Higgs. Fumbles the ball, and uh, Sean Jones picks it up. They're still Now they're marking it as down. No fumble. That was tight. You, that front four, the front four from uh, Houston is penetrating, getting getting a penetration to the point that the pulling guards and other people just can't get on track. Now you see the penetration from the backside. He's down on the ball comes out. But look at the number of blue shirts around him. They're coming from everywhere. People aren't just aren't getting blocked. Two yards in the play, third and eight. Miami has only 15 yards rushing. the shotgun Marino to Clayton incomplete intercepted picked off by the rookie Daryl Lewis and Lewis has a touchdown <laughs> 33 yards for the Oilers as they take the lead their fifth return recovery touchdown this year they lead the nfl well both quarterbacks for all their greatness they'll be in the hall of fame are forcing the ball look at this coverage it's right there and everybody comes breaking toward the ball once it's thrown and lewis happened to be there the ball just slid into his hands but the coverage is too tight i mean the percentages are so against the quarterback when he throws to a man that's so tightly covered Boy, it was Chris Dishman who was reaching in to break up the pass, and then Lewis, a spectator, able to pick it off and go 33 for the touchdown, and now Ian Hullfield for the extra point. And he lines it through. It's 7-3 Houston. What a day for Darrell Lewis, the number two pick from Arizona, his first NFL score. A safe journey. That's what it's all about out there on the road. So, of course, that's an important goal at Mazda. As we introduce the first of five new cars that improve your sense of control, that are stronger but not heavier, even one with dual airbags already built in. Five new cars just as pure and personal as the Mazda Miata. Drive safely. Far East to Europe. Across the Caribbean and throughout North America, only one airline covers so much of the world with so much warmth. It was a good day for ideas. Plans for a sidewalk cafe were finalized. A river walk was proposed. And someone had the vision to bring luxury and romance back to train travel. Keep those ideas coming, and we'll keep making them look their best. LaserJet Printers, from Hewlett Packard.
the nation's best playground players take it to the street. It's the biggest grassroots three-on-three -three basketball event in the nation. The Pizza Hut Pepsi Hoop It Up National Finals. Next Saturday on NBC. Back in Miami and a quick look at the ITT 10-minute ticker. New Orleans now up by 13 and Seattle trying to go 4-4 after a tough loss last Monday night to the Raiders as the lead as do the Jets now build a 14-3 against hapless Indianapolis. Ian Howfield with Houston up 7-3 bounces it over Aaron Craver's head and now Craver the rookie from Fresno State downs it in the end zone just in time as the uh, Oilers rushing downfield for a possible cheap one. Time for our Xerox Sports Facts. Who holds the single season record for passing yards in the Canadian Football League? American holds that honor. Single season record passing yards in the CFL. Of course, Warren Moon for six years a star in Edmonton as Edmonton won five Grey Cup championships. Think it's him, Bill? Well, you're, you're leading me on a little bit, Dick. <laughs> Well, I, I would yeah, I lead you upstage astray? me again. I got me. <laughs> the give is the Higgs runs into his own blocker and manufactures a couple of yards. I'll tell John you that Jones there that front four. I keep saying it, that, that this is the big difference between uh, Houston a year ago and, and now Jones in particular but the entire group. They're just stuffing the offensive line of uh, Miami. It's that simple including Richmond Webb in this particular uh, to this point in the game. But Jones is uh, so active. That six foot seven is means excellent leverage. Those 39 inch arms individually uh, means leverage, and that's what he gets. Second down eight. Tony Page, the fullback, gets four yards to the 26, bringing up third and four. Our answer. To the Xerox Sports Fact. I'm sure it's Warren Moon. I'm just positive. No, 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 Bill. No, no, no. Don't, don't be so positive. It used to be Warren Moon until oh. just this year. Doug Flutie, the former Patriot, former Bear, 5,676 yards for Flutie, playing with the British Columbia Lions. And Moon called uh, Flutie. They chatted this week. Uh, Warren is one of the gracious guys in the game with his congratulations. Third and four, shotgun Marino. Incomplete, good coverage again. Intended for Jensen, Marcus Robertson, 31, the rookie from Iowa State, deflecting the ball. Dan is too concerned about the pass rush at this time, and maybe uh, he should be, but he has been all year. 14 sacks, rushing the ball. In this case, uh, his eyes came off of his receivers to the pass rushers, and you can't do that as a quarterback. That's why the late throws, uh, the errant throws to covered receivers, that they're just not in sync pass offense-wise. Neither team today are. Ernest Givens back as Roby delivers a beautiful, booming spiral. Givens all the way back to his nine. And tripped up as he crosses the 25-yard line by Lewis Cooper. Let's go to New York in this update. Stop the presses, Dick. Here's a play you couldn't live without. Yes, it's your basic one-yard touchdown run off right tackle by John L. Williams, set up for Seattle after Barry Foster fumbled for Pittsburgh in Steeler territory, and the Seahawks lead 10 to nothing in Pittsburgh. Dick. All right, Bob, and here, Reggie Roby with his longest kick of the year, 64 yards, his uh, booming spiral. As long as ever, 77, but that one really drilled. Well, it's too bad, though, Dick. I don't want to be extra cri uh, critical, but why didn't he kick the ball out of bounds when he's kicking in the end zone in the first quarter? Moon on the screen to Lorenzo White. Tackle fumbles the ball, and Miami recovers. Bobby Harden fell on the ball. The tackle from behind. E.J. Jr. forced it free. This is the screen pass that the run and shoot has made so effective. You see the ball thrown. There should be linemen in front of it. But the pursuit from the backside by Jeff Cross 
totally broke the play up. Cross made the difference, and of course, Junior got in to make the stop, and then the ball, of course, was recovered, but Cross got it started. Cross got it started. Now, that screen has been tearing people apart, and Miami had a defense perfectly. Wow, maybe it was the early rain, but six turnovers in the first half, three aside, 7-3 Houston. Marino sets up at the Oiler 28. Higgs to the 23. Four hard-earned yards by the little guy from Kentucky. Johnny Meads, the tackler. You remember Higgs, Dick, in that first game of the year we did with Buffalo, how, how he, I think he gained over 150 yards and a losing cause, but he's the one guy on, on this offensive unit that can bounce the play. Uh, Houston is dominating inside, but Higgs is able, when he sees it or feels it, to slide and bounce outside. Second and six. Complete first down at the 13 to Tony. Check that. It's uh, Mark Duper with a catch. Steve Jackson, the cornerback, saw a fake and just didn't respond. Now, you see Jackson on the right of the screen, and he's just not even close. He thought it was a running play, and he just didn't really account for the ball being thrown out there that quickly. Jackson, the rookie from Purdue, a third-round pick this year, replacing the injured Richard Johnson. So... Marino and Miami figured to work against him. The Dolphins' deepest penetration. Marino now has 100 yards passing in this first half. Eight out of 17. Whoops, mix up. And Marino eats it at the 19. Sean Jones there to touch him down. Tony Page was at a, a slot back on the left, and he came to the right. So there was some kind of a special play they were about to run. And who's to say somebody went in the wrong, wrong direction? Because here's Tony coming this way. He's not looking for the ball. He wants to block somebody. And you'll see there isn't anybody to, to, to throw the ball to or hand it to. Now, three points isn't going to do much for Miami here. I think anybody can figure that one out. They've got to get seven because Houston's just too prolific an offensive team to uh, figure they're not going to score again. Miami's done a good job. Red zone inside the 20. Second and long. Marino might have been deflected at the line of scrimmage by Sean Jones. It was intended for Duper in the flat, but it seemed to change direction as Jones came in with that 6-7 height and those long arms to block the ball. Jones wanted to squeeze uh, Marino from the outside, and he's going to come from the right side of the screen and be in Marino's face with hands up but what was that pass called for in the first place? That was a seven-yard out pattern, and they had they had 15 yards to go. It, it wasn't going to do a thing for them, and that was sort of the easy way out for Miami at that point. There has to be something that would get a bigger chunk of yardage that you would at least attempt. Now shotgun. It hit three different sets of hands, and Bubba McDowell has his second interception today. McDowell of the Oilers, number 25, number 25 for Miami. Lewis Oliver each with two interceptions in the half. Well, you can hear the crowd. I don't blame them. If I were down there with them, I'd be doing the same thing. Now, those balls are just being forced in there. The last play was a bad call, no question about it, that quick out. Now, look at the number of people. There's a man underneath the receiver. There's not a chance that ball could be completed. And that's the third time Dan has thrown that kind of a pass. What a play by Bo Orlando behind the play, sees the ball deflected, and just volleyballs it to his teammate for the interception. And Houston stops Miami again. There's three guys around that ball, and it was thrown in there. That's just a, lot, a lack of confidence or something on the part of Miami. But are, is anyone open? It just seems like every time Reno throws, there are blue jerseys uh, double-teaming each receiver. Well, no question about it. But you'll see... There, there are, look at the number, four people and one receiver. Now, you'd want one receiver, but not four defenders. That's the second deflected ball for an interception, which means everybody's getting a jump on the ball and going toward it when it's thrown. Three interceptions today. That makes a dozen for the year. The improved Oiler defense. Approaching the two-minute mark, first half. Houston seven, Miami three. That might have been deflected and then dropped by Jones, and it's just as well. It wouldn't have gained much. 
Griggs was right in the face of Moon, right in his face, and got his hands up. So both teams are alert to those quick three-step drop passes, and the defensive ends are pushing into their blocker, then ready to jump to block the ball when it's thrown. Really strange to see two quarterbacks having terrible days on the field at the same time. Two, two great, great quarterbacks. Ones. Yeah. So. Did he get back? Apparently, I don't see a flag. And Moon goes down. Jeff Frost, his third sack of the year. It, it, it appears that uh, Houston feels all they have to do is show up to win. Moon's going to try a deep crossing pattern to Hill. Look how long he holds the ball. Boy, Cross did a great job. Three different Houston blockers had a piece of him. He finally split that defense and records his third sack. That's only the seventh time all year, sixth time that Warren Moon's gone down. Two-minute timeout. Liberty Mutual Insurance presents Legends of the Game. He was a member of the original Fearsome Foursome, a Phi Beta Kappa in college. He relied on brain power as much as brute strength to excel in the NFL. He played in a record 14 straight Pro Bowl games and was named to the team of the decade for the 60s. Who was this legend? The accident took my arm, and I thought my job. I just couldn't do what I used to. So Liberty Mutual gave me a Boston elbow. Its power and flexibility gave me back the ability to do my job, which gives me back the ability to pick up a paycheck. Merlin Olson helped to glamorize an unglamorous craft and was elected to the Hall of Fame, a true legend of the game. There you are, an upper respiratory wreck. And there they are, NyQuil and a look-alike. It may not be NyQuil, but it's cheaper. The thing is, with NyQuil, you know you won't be able to die coughing and sneezing, and you've got to rest. <laughs> You're being paranoid. This is probably made by Vicks. Here it is, in teeny print. It's not made by Vicks. This may be cheaper, but I'm not taking any chances. NyQuil, the only nighttime sniffling, sneezing, coughing, aching, stuffy, head fever so you can rest medicine made by Vicks. Also available in new liquid caps. 1990 Kentucky Derby winner unbridled. 1991 Derby winner strike the gold. They stand in the way of in excess and festine in the race for horse of the year. The Breeders' Cup, the most important day in thoroughbred racing. November 2nd on NBC. Back at noisy Joe Robbie Stadium on the IT 10 minute ticker. New Orleans trying to go 7 0. And Leonard Russell has just scored for New England to take a 14-10 lead. Warren Moon from his own two-yard line. Flags down. And incomplete to Lorenzo White. It appeared to be a legal motion against the Houston left tackle, Don Maggs. And if so, of course, uh, it'll be declined by Miami. That. That'll be a dead ball foul if indeed it is against Max pulling off the line of scrimmage and they'll play it again after a one yard penalty half the distance to the goal line. Well that's the crowd noise. Mags did not hear the snap count. That noise is right behind him caught in the end of the field with, it, with people uh, everybody surrounding you probably 20,000 people screaming there he moves because he cannot hear Warren, Warren Wood at this point. That's the kind of noise that used to benefit Miami when they played in the Orange Bowl. They, players have talked about the fact that only on rare exceptions do they get that kind of noise support here at Joy Robbie. Bigger stadium, farther from the crowd. Well, that Orange Bowl was tough. You were right on top of the crowd, or they were on top of you. The metal stands in the Orange Bowl, and the people would stomp. It would scare the hell out of you. <laughs> <laughs> well, you didn't do so badly there. You rallied thanks to yeah, that Joe okay Montana drive. Times, yeah. Super Bowl championship in your final game. Third and 20 from the one-yard line, and here comes the crowd. Lorenzo White. 
out to the 10. That'll give them some punting room. And with 153, Don Shula on the opposite sidelines from Jack Pardee will use a timeout. They get it at the 152 mark with a punt from Houston upcoming. Most of my friends don't know what they're going to do after graduation, but I've already locked in guaranteed skill training in the Army. Qualify now and you can reserve even the Army's most sought-after technical training, up to 12 months in advance, through the Army's delayed entry program. Sure, being a soldier won't be easy, but then nothing worth having ever is. Fifty-five-year-old Jack Pardee, a great linebacker at Texas A&M. He came out of a small Texas town that played six-man football. A top player, pro bowler with the Los Angeles Rams, Washington Redskins, 15 years in the league as a linebacker. War number 32 as a teammate of Deacon Jones and Merlin Olson, Maxie Vaughn with the Rams. Well, he's come into Houston and given the team an epic. Just turned the team around as far as what the priorities were. Hardy brought, brought the win or loss record instead of the attention-seeking stuff that was going on before. Montgomery under pressure, a flag down, and the kicker gets off a good Boy, one. All the way back to the 28, Scott Miller, the rookie from UCLA, gets a block. And he's brought down at the 37-yard line, and now we'll check the penalty flag. Eugene Seal made the hit, 62 yards for Montgomery and that would be his longest by far by 12 yards this year. It's against Houston. They may make him kick again. What a difference. That was a perfectly executed play other than the infraction by Houston. A beautiful punt. Great coverage. And they really got themselves out of a hole. But here they are again on being backed up. So five yards will take it to the five yard line. Both Montgomery and Roby with their top punts of the year. Well, Coach Smith is uh, when, when he gets an excellent play like that. Oh, gee, I'd hate to ha record those uh, remarks. Well, your kicker just explodes one for you. Gee. By far the best of the season in his own end zone. And. Uh, you wonder if he can repeat that. Scott Miller will stand at the Miami 45. And the Dolphins undoubtedly will put pressure on Montgomery. Ten men on the line of scrimmage. Houston leading seven to three. One thirty nine left in the half. This one's much shorter. Miller on the run comes up to the 50. 40. 35-yard line. What a difference that five-yard penalty made. Well, Scott Miller did an excellent job uh, feeling his way up the field. He took one uh, coverage man on at a time, made him miss, and just worked his way up the field. That penalty was 28 yards, the difference in where Miami had the ball, the first kick and this one. And especially, Dick, with 129 and a half, in the timeout situation as it is. Miami, Miami having none left. Right, and Miami now has a real shot at it. Now let's see if Dan Marino can have a little more touch on his passes, be a, li a little, believe it or not, I, I never thought I'd say this, but be a little more poised in getting his job done. Uses the shotgun from the 34 of Houston. Plenty of time and off the fingertips of Mark Clayton. Chris Dishman, who is having an all-pro year at that left corner with good coverage once again. And Dishman is playing with a hamstring pull. Dishman's one of those real coy cornerbacks that take a, take a, take a chance from time to time. And he takes tapes home at night. What a different guy as to his dedication to the game. Used to take him home and then record over him. Yeah, huh? get the <laughs> TV shows from him. Now he studies them. He's come up with all these turnovers from week to week. Second down. Underneath, Tony Martin. Good move by Martin. Clock is running now, and Miami, because it used two timeouts earlier in the half, 
And then one uh, here in the final two minutes have no way to stop the clock except by incomplete pass. That's not a first down, so it's third and one. There's your first down to Jim Jensen at the 20. Stolen away by Dishman, and look at how quick he was again. And that was a quick whistle. Oh, now my. Now, they should be stopping the clock at this point. Whenever that ball's taken that distance, they stop the clock until they get the ball back. That's a good point, and Marino was appealing just that point. They were going to let it run. What if we'd have run to the, out the tunnel with it? <laughs> you know, I mean, you, you have to stop the clock if that ball's just, one of the officials doesn't have access to the ball. You have to stop the clock. Now, let's see. There it is. Jensen not down as Dishman as they double teamed. Uh, no review, apparently. So, Marino guns to Clayton for a touchdown. Mark Clayton, Miami leads. fifth touchdown reception of the season and the veteran from Louisville hooking up with Dan Marino for another Dolphin score and it's nine to seven after a play that appeared to be a steal by Dishman not allowed Stojanovic with the extra point 39 seconds left in the half Miami by three This is a commercial for this clever little portable CD player from Magnavox, the inventors of CD technology. I'm sorry, actually, this is a commercial for the ingenious Magnavox 13-inch TV with a built-in VCR. I'm sorry, this is really a commercial for this brilliant 52-inch TV with 100-watt Dolby surround sound. I'm sorry, wrong again. This is supposed to be a commercial for this Magnavox 386 notebook computer. Hang on, we haven't finished. Oh, I'm sorry. The ingenious products from Magnavox. They're smart, very smart. Now, this is an interesting pattern. You're going to see a shallow cross right here to pull these people forward. And then you're going to see Clayton break into the middle in front of both of these safeties. And Marino's going to throw the ball right on a line to him. There's the shallow cross. Pull the defenders forward. There's Clayton right in behind him. And he beat Dishman on the play. After Dishman, who might still have been arguing and thinking about the play preceding the touchdown, where Dishman, on uh, a very quick whistle, denied a... Uh, what would have been a steal? Well, it was a purely a zone defense, and that's just what Dan Marino needed. Both safeties, by the way, were in their own end zone. You'd wonder about that, because they should be trying to stop people from getting to the end zone. Well, Miami, that's the first offensive touchdown of the half. The Houston score coming on Darrell Lewis's 33-yard touchdown on an interception. A short drive of 34 after the punt and punt return of Scott Miller. So a series of breaks there for Miami to lead to the Dolphin lead. And now Stojanovic to kick to Pinkett and Brown. The veteran Allen Pinkett. And he's to the 27-28 yard line. Let's check our ITT 10-minute ticker. New Orleans now 16-0. The Saints with Morton Anderson three field goals today Seattle still up 10 nothing shutout working at Pittsburgh the Jets see Indianapolis kick a field goal to shorten their lead and New England at the half still by four over the Vikings Domino Pizza halftime NFL live report coming up Bob and the gang will analyze the scores and top plays of the early games today as Warren Moon with 32 seconds left in the half. Alan Pinkett. And Pinkett out to the 38-39 yard line. Houston has some timeouts. Will they use them? Now with 23 seconds left in the half. Jack Pardee. A quiet man. Uh, there could not be a greater contrast in coaches than Pardee now and the man that left the Houston to go to Atlanta, Jerry Glanville. It's a stark contrast from one end of the scale way over to the other end of the scale. The players were in a state, apparently in a state of shock. You talk to 
people like Jeffries and some of these others, they couldn't believe the what there was demanded of them immediately upon the previous coach leaving. Just a total, a total change. And the emphasis is strictly on winning football games, is productivity. Well, you were called a taskmaster as well. The detail was very important to you. Some of your players didn't like that early on. Well, I tell you, this, this guy, Jack Pardee, is the ideal man for the job, and he's brought discipline in a sense. I don't mean disciplining someone by sending them to their room. I mean that people paid attention to detail and refined the skills that they have and brought order to the team. You know, at one time, it was like a, a sideshow, Dick, well, if you recall. The players, several yeah, called just, it a circus. Just yeah. ridiculous. The bottom line is to win. It's all that matters in professional football. Two timeouts left for Houston. They 23 seconds, starting from the 39. Take it again as Miami defending the pass. Warren Moon hasn't called time yet, and finally, uh, after about four or five seconds had expired, another timeout used by Houston at the 45-yard line. Uh, now, Warren has uh, lost about 12 seconds by being late calling his timeouts. It looks as though he's looking to the sideline to just for them to decide whether a timeout should be called. Well, Jack Pardee a little heavier than he played at 6-3 and about 235 with the Rams. I was privileged to call many of the games in which the Jack Pardee played. Here, Johnny Unitas throws, and Pardee, he could get back there for a linebacker, and as a former college fullback as well, knew how to run the ball. He scored five touchdowns as a linebacker in his NFL career. See Deacon Jones, 75, Merlin Olsen, 74, they're blocking for him, and he was always, as he is now, understated, quiet, solid, strong, but there was a toughness about him that everyone around felt. I mean, he, somehow in Pardee, Pardee did it by example. Uh, everyone was want to follow. He knows his football, too. I mean, he he's knows football. It's that simple. He's not uh, on the sideline trying to attract attention to himself. He's getting his job done. Second and four with just a dozen seconds left for Moon. Underneath to Gibbons, and Gibbons gets out of bounds at the 39-yard line with four seconds left. Well, I, I mentioned about 12 seconds that uh, Warren Moon lost in calling his timeouts. Now, if they had those 12 seconds at this point, one completed pass would mean a field goal. At the 39-yard line, it would be about a 56-yard attempt for Ian Howfield, and that would seem out of his range. So, Gibbons shaken up a bit as he struggled to get out of bounds. That play uh, reminded me of another awful moment a year ago when it was Bo Jackson struggling with a tackler on his leg, and that created that hip injury that, at least for the moment, has cost uh, Jackson his dual career. And Gibbons in the same position, all the weight of a tackle on him, he's trying to get out of bounds, but does not appear to be seriously hurt. Same position, a tackler and ball carrier. Moon uh, held to 84 passing yards here in the first half, and that's about as well as you can uh, deflate the run and shoot. Good defense, excellent defense, but also Warren Moon. I guess you call these off days. Of course, he's got 30 minutes. He could throw for 300 yards in the second half. Boy, Bill, good news and bad news for the Irish of Notre Dame uh, last night at the Air Force Academy against a game uh, Falcon team. Notre Dame goes six and one with a win, 28-15. But what a costly defeat it was, as they'll go into the traditional encounter with Southern California's Trojans next Saturday at one o'clock, playing without two of their defensive tackles. Eric Jones, a broken leg in the first half, and perhaps their best defensive player, Bryant Young, with a broken leg in the second half, at a position where Lou Holtz already was very, very thin. Could have been any other position on that Notre Dame team. Howfield apparently will try the 56-yard field goal. It's up, but it's not nearly long enough, and lands just at the end line of the end zone, off to the right, no good. So in a first half filled with airs on both sides, Dan Marino gets a touchdown throw to Mark Clayton for the only score by the offense. And Miami's Dolphins, desperate in a critical game for a win, have the lead. Now to Domino's halftime NFL report. This is the Domino's Pizza NFL Live halftime report. Brought to you by Domino's Pizza. Nobody knows like Domino's how you like pizza at home. 
Okay, Bob Costas back with OJ and Bill Parcells. The game you're watching, Miami with the 10-7 lead over Houston. And uh, we'll start with you, Juice. Your thoughts? Well, I tell you, the I, I, only thing I can believe is that the two quarterbacks are having trouble with the similarities and colors of the uniform because they've both been horrible. <laughs> I mean, Marino has thrown the ball dead into coverage. Uh, while while uh, you look at uh, Moon, he's hit two wide-open defensive players. And the situation with Houston, we think they're one of the best teams in the AFC. If they're going to really be one of the best teams in the AFC, they got to take advantage of a team like the Dolphins, a team that's playing five or six defensive backs that run the football. Have to be able to run the football. You got to be able to win on the road, and they really haven't done that. They they snuck out of uh, the stadium here and beaten the Jets barely. They lost to New England in New England, and they beat Cincinnati, who's not a great football team, it turns out. And here they are in Miami losing. Bill. Well, Houston isn't sharp today. Now, you got to put yourself in Jack Pardee's, or at least I can, put myself in Jack Pardee's position. He's got to convince his team, after watching Kansas City 42-7 last week, that, that Miami is capable of giving Houston a game. And quite obviously, Houston isn't as sharp as they should be, and uh, they're not playing well right now. And uh, Miami's uh, look like they may upset them. On the other hand, let's look at Marino's plight. Without making excuses for him, even a great player like Marino can have a bad game. But he's got no running game. Sammy Smith has something like 16 yards for the year since he came back off the injured list. And Mark Higgs had been doing well, but he's been supplanted by Smith. They got no tight end. Their offensive line is decimated by injuries. This guy doesn't have anything to work with, right? Yeah, anybody can make excuses. <laughs> Results are the only <laughs> thing that counts, Bob. <laughs> but didn't you wish that those Bills teams had a little bit better passing game? Didn't yeah, you wish oh, that? Yeah, I wish I had a veteran quarterback for most of my career, but, you know, you don't. You don't make excuses. You just go out and do what you can do. Well... I didn't that's have you around to help me out. Uh, do you hear me making excuses that I have to sit here next to you? No. Moving right along. The Saints with that tremendous defense, which hasn't allowed a touchdown in 18 consecutive quarters now. 16-0 over Tampa Bay at the half. They're doing it without Bobby Abair. He's got the sore shoulder. Steve Walsh at quarterback. Ironhead Hayward inactive with a hamstring injury. It makes no difference. The Saints apparently on their way to a 7-0 record as they're shutting out the Bucs halftime at the Superdome. Seattle moving toward halftime in Pittsburgh, and they have just now headed for the locker rooms. The Seahawks with a 17-0 lead over the Steelers. The Steelers have been hit with 10 first-half penalties and a costly turnover. Barry Foster fumbled in Pittsburgh territory. John L. Williams scored at the end of the ensuing Seattle drive. Dave Craig back, showing no signs of rustiness. He missed six weeks with a broken thumb. He completes 14 of 18 passes upon his return today for 133 yards. Hasn't been intercepted in the first half. Threw a 14-yard touchdown pass to Jeff Chadwick just before halftime. Seattle with the lead at 17 to nothing. The Jets and Indianapolis, a 14-6 lead for the Jets. And let's take a look as they've moved to the third quarter at some of the highlights from that game. Ken O'Brien suffered a sprained ankle after being sacked early in the first quarter, but he missed only one play. Came back in time for this bit of razzle-dazzle. The pitch to Johnny Hector. Hector returns it to O'Brien. Hits the wide open Rob Moore as the Colt defense bites on the fake. And the Jets go out in front 7 to nothing. Colts quarterback Jeff George continues to have his problems behind that makeshift offensive line. Nobody touched Kyle Clifton as he came through for the sack. Bruce Coslett elects to go for it on this play on fourth and one from the one-yard line, and Brad Baxter takes it across for the touchdown, which gives the Jets the lead at that point at 14-3. to Dean Biasucci added a field goal just before halftime. They've kicked off to start the second half, 14-6 Jets. Bill? Well, with the Jets' recent history with the Colts, not uh, having won and didn't win, uh, beat them either time last year, uh, I don't think the Jets are probably resting too comfortably. On the Colts' side, you know, the Colts don't have chances to win too many games this year. They're in there at the half. The game's still within striking distance. You know, you might see a fired-up Colt team in the second half. I'm sure Bruce Collett's worried about that. Colts doing it without Eric Dickerson, who continues to hobble. And, of course, the Colts are 0-7 at this point in the season. 14-6 early in the third. One other score to report. New England in the third quarter with the lead on Minnesota. 14-10 in Foxborough. Good first half for Herschel Walker. He had 74 yards rushing in the first two quarters, plus a touchdown for the Vikings. And we're back with more as we talk about the San Francisco 49ers troubles at this point in a two and four season. Bill Parcells will be back with us and Bill Walsh will also join in the conversation after this. I'm Don Shula. Throughout my 38 years in the National Football League, the one person who was always at my side was my wife, Dorothy. But in 1986, Dorothy noticed a lump in her breast. We prayed that it wasn't cancer, but the diagnosis confirmed our darkest fear. The doctors did everything that they could, and Dorothy never stopped fighting. For six years, she held on, and we held on to each other. But on February 25, 1991, she was gone. 
I've learned that with faith and love, I will never really lose her. She's still with me in the tough times when I need her the most. And I know that she wouldn't want me to give up the fight that she couldn't win. That's why I want to ask for your support of the United Way and all the United Way agencies that provide service to cancer patients and their families. I believe that with love, faith, and commitment, we can all be the real winners in life because the United Way, it brings out the best in all of us. This message furnished by the National Football League. An accusation. I'm being harassed by a man. A denial. I never touched her. But when it leads to murder, will Gillespie find the truth in all new heat of the night? Then what kind of mother would refuse medicine that could save her child's life? Our religion forbids it. Is it freedom of religion or murder? They don't have a right to murder their child. All new Law and Order after Heat, NBC Tuesday. Harding, old money. Nice guy. Bogosian, pharmaceuticals, shoots in the low 80s. That's Vanderpool, oil, good backhand. Who's that? Turpin, bazillionaire. What's he like? He's smart. Stop by Hennessy Lexus and Natalie Lexus and see how smart driving an LS400 can be. When you're dealing with the first time customer to the men's warehouse, you want to make sure he understands that we offer a, a full tailoring facility. And that includes things like lifetime free pressing. In addition to the money that we're going to save him at his purchase time, we're going to save him 50 or 100 bucks on top of that just by pressing the garment for him so he doesn't have to send it to the dry cleaners every time he needs a, a, a press job. Congratulations, Atlanta Braves, National League champs. Brought to you by Domino's Pizza. Nobody knows like Domino's how you like pizza at home. Okay, as we promised on the pregame show, Bill Parcells and Bill Walsh will be here now at halftime to talk about the 49ers' problems. But before we hear from them, let's take a look at this to set things up. For a decade, the 49ers have been a symbol of National Football League excellence. But this year, San Francisco occupies last place in the NFC West, their worst start since the strike season of 82. The loss of Joe Montana to injury has left them without a proven leader and with many unanswered questions. The 49ers' rushing attack has been anemic. Their leading ground gainer is quarterback Steve Young, who's picked up 215 yards to go along with a team-leading three rushing touchdowns. Well, obviously, our, our defense didn't play well. The once dominant San Francisco defense has been vulnerable to a ground attack. Ranked third in the league against the rush last year, the 49ers rushing defense has plummeted to 18 through the first six games. We've played well enough to win each ball game that we've been in. It's not like we're getting blown out, but we're making the mistakes at the wrong time, either offensively or defensively, our special teams that's costing us the ball game. 49ers special teams have been anything but. They were exposed last week against the Falcons, allowing a blocked punt, and then this 100-yard kickoff return by Deion Sanders. You can sense a little bit of panic around here now, but. Uh, we can't think about those things. We can't think about the what's going to happen if we continue to lose. We've just got to turn it around because we do have the talent to win. Okay, down to Miami now where Bill Walsh is working today's game. Oilers and Dolphins will turn to him for his thoughts. Bill, what's your assessment of the 49ers' current state of affairs? Well, they haven't lost a game by a touchdown yet, so they've been very, very competitive. They've been in every game. They could very well have won them. But on the other hand, they have a number of younger players who really haven't been assimilated or haven't been indoctrinated in the winning tradition of the San Francisco 49ers. And each phase of the game at some point has failed them along the way. And so it's not just one critical area. It's the entire uh, operation of the team. It's functioning. It's not up to the standard they've had in the past. Well, I think, I think the main thing here is that this is the first time that San Francisco's defense has really failed them. You know, usually you could count on two, three touchdowns at the most against San Francisco, but, you know, a team puts up 39 against you. That does shake your confidence no matter what. I think it's a combination of injuries, defensive line, not being able to put the pass rush on, therefore their pass defense suffers, and also special teams gives up two touchdowns last week. Bill, even though they might have been past their peak, how much did they miss guys like Ronnie Lott and Matt Millen? Oh, no question. Uh, Ronnie Lott, in particular, can make plays near the line of scrimmage. He can still make those big hits. Uh, Roger Craig uh, 
clearly would have been the best running back on the 49er roster this year, and he can still do certain things related to their specific offense. Uh, they have failed to run the ball. My guess really is, my estimate is, that they have the worst set of running backs in the National Football League at this moment. And uh, we did a Charger game a few weeks ago. Chargers had four running backs superior to anything on the 49er roster. So a void in that area, really. And then a breakdown, as Bill says, in defense, something that had not occurred in a previous game like that was against Bill's team in that playoff thing. I still have nightmares over that damn game. But, but uh, meanwhile, the 49ers are just breaking down in individual areas, yet they have yet to lose by a touchdown, and they still can, can resurrect themselves, in a sense, and be a playoff team. Well, how do you fix it? Very briefly, how do you fix it in the middle of the season? I don't, think, I, I don't think it's going to be fixed, Bob, right now. I think there are too many areas where they're breaking down. I, you know, they've got to put three, four, five wins together, get their confidence back up. That's the only way they'll make a run. Bill Walsh? I agree. They're going to have to just methodically get better and better through practice, through preparation, and then perform better. And then those that just aren't performing up to 49er standards can't be on the field. They're going to have to search through, sift through their personnel, and find those guys that can win for them. All right, Bill and Bill, thanks very much. They still haven't been able to make a trade to beef up the running game. The last several drafts have not yielded impact players. The Niners are two and four, and we're back as NFL Live halftime activities will continue. The mayor's got a new bow. Who could it be? Good morning. Oh, my God. I laid down with dogs. James Garner's Man of the People. Then put on your thinking caps. Did I ever mention that I happen to be a published author? Letters to penthouse don't count. Pacific stations in jeopardy. You're Alex Trebek. Pretty neat, huh? At 8, 7 central tonight. Values handed down from generation to generation. That's the way of the West. For over 25 years, Winn-Dixie has brought you only the finest WD brand U.S. Choice B. And that's a tradition that will never change. Winn-Dixie, the beef people. Congratulations, Atlanta Braves, National League champs. Welcome back to Jorabi Stadium. Miami Dolphins leading the favorite Houston Oilers 10 to 7. The surprising stat of the first half, high-scoring Houston, the top pass offense, number two offense, had the ball eight times, didn't score. Their only score on a defensive interception. Miami's defense uh, got the run and shoot figured out? Well, I'd give Miami's defense a lot of credit. They played the best game of the year for them thus far, their front four in particular, but Houston's also self-destructing. Warren Moon, possibly the best in the league, uh, along with Dan Marino, an all-time great. Both are having just very, very average days, and it shows up in the score. Four turnovers aside, Warren Moon intercepted four times. Ian Howfield to Aaron Craver, the rookie from Fresno State. And the former Bulldog is toppled at the 20-yard line. And uh, look at the cutter first-half statistics. Both offense uh, shackled, 62 yards rushing for the Oilers, only 13 for Miami. Marino having more success throwing the ball. It's certainly off day for both of these stars, Moon and Marino. And total yards about the same, turnovers for each, and that's really the story. But if you'd have said either one would have come under, under 150 in total yardage for a half, you wouldn't believe it. Uh, especially the way... Uh, Houston's been playing recently. They've been getting 400 yards plus offensively for 60 minutes. Marino underneath. And Sammy Smith brought down at the 27-yard line. Now that kind of throw, believe it or not, can sustain drives. If Dan will just go to those outlet receivers coming out of the backfield late, like Smith or Higgs, uh, and just sustain the ability to make first downs instead of drilling it down the field. And both quarterbacks have done that almost recklessly today and I can understand Marino doing it because of what's gone on in Miami in the last few weeks their their football team but uh, for Warren Moon that's the surprise seven yards on that pass and so it's Smith on the run he has the first down and more out to the 36 now that's the Sammy Smith that Don Shula and the fans of the Dolphins are 
hungry to see. They move the uh, attack about a hole wider. This would be like what they call a six-hole play. You see, I was stretching further. Uh, they're not going to go near Doug Smith or Ray Childress inside. They want to stretch and run wider, uh, which makes a lot of sense. See him stretching it out, getting to the outside, and Childress just couldn't get there. And the 220-pound Smith from Florida State getting up full momentum, tough to bring down in the open field. Page and Smith behind Marino on first down. And William Fuller gets to him first. And Doug Smith is there to finish the job. Fuller, who comes into the game with seven sacks, leading the American Football Conference. Fuller just, 95. Uh, it was a play pass of sorts, but the, the, the Houston front four didn't even think run. They're just coming up the field. And you see Fuller just working up the field. And Dan Marino, because of the the uh, stress over there by Jones coming up the field uh, took his eye off the receivers. And once he did that, he was dead meat. And once he did that, he was just a runner and couldn't throw the ball. The Dolphins have allowed the fewest sacks in the NFL in each of the past nine years, and yet that was the 15th sack this year. That matches all of last season's total. Now he's going to roll out to get the ball off. Skips it away from Bubba McDowell, who has a couple of interceptions today. Well, a tactic was good. He was going to start straight back, then rolled outside to get away from that pass rush, but then the ball just bounced to the receiver. Now, why that occurs, you, you, Dan will have to reflect on it after the game. It's just not him. Third and long. Yeah, maybe it is that mustache. I suppose you throw. Maybe that throws off his his weight. You know, maybe there's more. You know, you something. should have been a coach, Dick. You really, <laughs> you'd have figured that out, wouldn't you? Jim you Moore? should have been a coach. I could have had you at my right hand. <laughs> Those ideas would have made the difference. <laughs> you'd have so many rings, you wouldn't know what to do with them. Third down and plenty. Reno. Oh boy. Almost intercepted again as that was in into a crowd. Mike Dumas, the rookie from Indiana, was the closest player, and he's uh, in a blue jersey. Well, Marino, uh, to a man, visiting with the Dolphins last night and the day before, all saying, in, in a sense, we're out of sync. We're not together. We're not well knit uh, from a foot, from a performance standpoint. Boy, are they right? I mean, it's just so evident. Uh, the front four, the defense, in a sense, for Miami's sort of held a minute. But gee, the offense. Those throws being drilled 30 and 40 yards down the field. People covered. Robich lines one. Ernest Givens. Now that's a return ball there. 23 30. 40. And out of bounds at the 45 yard line. Ernest Givens. So the Oilers' first possession starts in good field position. If you order a suit designed around the way you're built, you have to wait about two months. If you want a house designed around the way you live, the wait is two years. But if what you desire is a car designed around the way you drive, you don't have to wait another day. The 1991 Acura Legend Coupe. Let me just cut in here with news about a pretty exciting non-alcoholic brew. Coors See, it doesn't matter if you're a log cutter or a dog cutter. You're going to love a Coors Cutter. It tastes like beer because it's brewed like beer. Thing is, Cutter Special Yeast doesn't produce all that alcohol. So whether you're a stud cutter or a spud cutter, a Coors Cutter goes down smooth and easy as you please. Nothing cuts it like a cutter. A company can learn a lot in 125 years. Valvoline has. You learn in the lab, you learn on the road, you learn on the racetrack. As you learn, you make your product better. And better, and better. Today's Valvoline will keep your engine cleaner than ever before. And cleaner means more protection against engine wear. 125 years of quality. That's why people who know use Valvoline. NBC Sports coverage of the National Football League is brought to you by Acura Automobiles. Experience precision-crafted performance. By the U.S. Army. Learn how to get an edge on life. Be all you can be. By Valvoline Motor Oil. People who know use Valvoline. 
and by Hertz. We never forget who made us number one. We're Hertz. We're America's wheels. I figured something else out, Bill Walsh. You know those pom-poms? Those are for hot weather. I mean, that, those serve as fans. Actually, they're cooling devices. You got you got Your mind is a steel trap. <laughs> I mean, those are the details that make the difference. Well, you walk away from a game saying, now I've learned something new. Houston's first possession, second half. Moon to Jeffries to the 45 of Miami, a nine-yard pickup. Gee, that was well done. That was very well done. Uh, Reggie Roby most likely has the, the, the strongest punting leg the game has seen, maybe ever, but certainly in the last decade. But the consistency, although the average is 45, that last punt was a line drive, and there was a 22-yard return off the punt. A previous punt went 20 yards over the end line, kicking into the end zone instead of out of bounds. And so the, the refinement of the punting, uh, Reggie has yet to develop, and, and may not ever. Second and one for Moon and the Oilers and Lorenzo White. Boy, he's playing hard today. He has a whole section of fans cheering him. He's from nearby Fort Lauderdale, and he said yesterday he had purchased 50 tickets while he was in Houston, and then he scrambled around once arriving in Florida and bought 30 more. He has 80 of his family here, including his mother and grandmother, grandfather, and nephews and nieces all ages here to cheer Lorenzo. Wish we uh, knew where they were sitting. We'd uh, give you a shot of the white plan. First down at the Miami 43. Moon, wide open field to the right. And he's out of bounds with a first down at the 31. The 34-year-old legs of Warren Moon still eating up some good yards, a dozen on that scramble. Well, in an effort to get to Moon, the uh, Miami pass rushers are just sort of reckless. They're taking either side of the blocker, and they just want to get penetration or push into him. And that time, neither side was contained. Warren could have come out left or right, nobody there. And a great, uh, great athlete like this, a great uh, performer, just instinctively knew what to do. Always a good runner, going back to his days at the University of Washington. But now, as you saw those numbers, he just doesn't want to run. In a situation like that where he has no choice, he takes it. But his game is throwing, as he does now. And there's Haywood Jeffries again, 11 yards, a first down at the 20. And gives us a chance to check other scores. The Hurts 10-minute ticker. New Orleans 16-0. Seattle, another field goal early in the third. At Pittsburgh. At uh, the Jets, to me, Dick, the two coaches that deserve attention this year, Chuck Knox always does. His team is always ready to play. Uh, finally, they've got Craig back. They become competitive again. And Bruce Cosler, I think, sounds a, a wonderful job, regardless of win-loss at the Jets, because they've elevated them into at least the middle of the pack, and they're competitive every week. But between Chuck Knox and Bruce Coslett, two of the best coaching jobs uh, that are being done today in the, in the NFL. They did not give the mark at the 20, but the 21. So as you saw, it'll be second down in inches. It's a good point when you bring up the Jets and Miami. They come into this game both three and four in the East, both with a bye next week, and both with a fairly easy schedule in the second half of the season. Miami in particular, their opponents the last eight games have a combined record of something like 18 and 35. So if Don Chula can beat Houston today, he feels he's got a playoff chance. But second and one, trailing 10 to 7, Houston with a ball. And it's White plowing close to the 15 in the first down. David Briggs got a piece of him to trip him up. Lorenzo White, who in two Heisman races, finished third to Bo Jackson and was fourth to Tim Brown of Notre Dame while he starred with the Spartans of Michigan State. He and the alums of Michigan State celebrating their first win of the year yesterday against Minnesota. Lorenzo's blocking ability is the, is the difference between himself and Alan Pickett, who's also a fine running back. But Lorenzo at 5'11 is an excellent outside blocker. Moon and the Oilers driving deep. 
flung by Bobby Harden, who had an interception in the first half. They have Harden just lurking in that middle. He got that earlier interception, and this time he just drifts with Warren Moon and watches his eyes and tries to get between him and the receiver. And it worked very well that time. Just and basically sort of a spying linebacker, but he's playing the linebacker spot at about 195 pounds. And you'll see him right over the ball and right at this point on the field and you'll see him move right with Warren Moon. He's, he's moving right with Warren Moon and then up in the air he goes. Not really covering anyone, just trying to read his eyes, huh? A reverse. And it's Drew Hill with blockers. But boy, did Miami react well, and they stop him for a short game. E.J. Jr., Estes James, if you please, from Alabama. What a play. It he, looked as if that might go for a touchdown. It looked great. And, and then the defenders began to converge, converge faster than the ball carrier. And E.J. Jr., with all that experience, could spot that thing coming. He took just the right angle back and cut the whole thing off. Number one pick out of Alabama in 1981 of the Cardinals. Come through a tough, tough existence as a player, and he's come out of it all right. Third down and nine. Underneath, and it'll be short of a first down as Curtis Duncan has his first reception of the day. From Northwestern is Duncan, uh, who reads and writes poetry. And Jack Party says, uh, like to have had seven, but I'll settle for the short field goal and a tie. Yeah, they feel they can hold Miami. So if they just began to work up toward them, naturally they'll be behind 7-6 at the end of this play. But if they can just get right up in there close, uh, in the fourth quarter they'll win it. And that was excellent coverage on the back side of that play. Excellent. 26-yard attempt by Howfield, who's 9 for 12 this year. Boy, a high snap and a good job done by Frank Mayotki, who is uh, primarily on the roster because he does hold so well. It's time. Ten years. His hair is a little thinner. I don't remember her looking so beautiful. Not bad. <laughs> for an ex chalk Hello, stranger. I'm hardly a stranger. Well, you are late. I know. You shouldn't have waited ten years for this. <gasps> Happy anniversary. The Diamond Anniversary Band. Tell her you'd marry her all over again. <laughs> you sure can't pick an appetizer. After you've turned off the engine of the Acura Vigor, it will continue to run through your mind. The new Vigor from Acura. Elvira here, back with a helping hand for Halloween. Coors Light, it's the official beer of Halloween. And just what an adult party needs to be a howling success. <gasps> what? You don't believe me? What do you need, like a sign from above? Be sure to visit this display wherever you buy Tours Light. And it's just perfect for when friends drop in. See what I mean? September 8th, 1970. I Dream of Jeannie ends. What has she been up to since then? I shall resign the presidency. Do you believe in miracles? See what she's up to next. All new, I still dream of Jeannie the movie. NBC Tonight. Boy, the little things do mean a lot. Frank Mayotke, you fans up in Grand Rapids, Michigan watching. Remember him at Grand Valley State. Those good hands caught 121 passes, and he needed those to get up high, get the ball down, and Howfield nails it to tie the game at 10. Mayotki, a free agent for the Giants a couple of years ago. And now it's Howfield picking it off to Craver and Higgs. It'll be Aaron Craver at the four. And he's not out of bounds at the 
15 yard line. Marino comes on the field and we go to our second Xerox sports facts of the day. And here's the question. See if you do better this time Bill. Name the all time quarterback receiver touchdown combination. In other words what quarter I'll give you a hint. It was not Cecil Isbell and Don Hudson of the Green Bay Packers. What quarterback receiver combination has scored more touchdowns than any other combination in NFL history? I'll give you a chance, as we will all fans, to Ange think about it a play. You don't have to answer. Angelo Bertelli. <laughs> <laughs> Marino from the 20, a 10 all tie, midpoint of the third quarter. The duper complete as they throw in front of the rookie corner, Steve Jackson, for about 10. That was well timed, beautifully done. Would Charlton Heston have been <laughs> any factor in that? No, the, the movie hasn't been made yet, but he would be a possible uh, candidate for the quarterback role. Ronald Reagan. No. We better hurry up and give the answer, I'm afraid, down there. Our My mind's really playing tricks on me now. At the 26, there it is. Name the all time, and there is a half the answer in your picture. Dan Marino, Mark Clayton. With a touchdown pass today, 69. No combination in history ever more productive in scoring than Marino and Clayton. Smith breaking tackles and spinning out to the 35-yard line before William Fuller can drag him down. Once again, Tony Page leading that play is a devastating blocker, and he can make the difference as he gets to the hole. He goes right up underneath and takes people out of there. And meanwhile, the spin by Sammy Smith helped. He was hit and he spun instinctively and that tore off the arms. Smith, who rushed for 831 yards last year. That was the most since Larry Sonko by a Dolphin back in 79. First down, 37. Marino Good. underneath Smith to the 43 yard line. Uh, Dan's back in rhythm now. He looked down the field and he wanted uh, Clayton down the field and came right off to his outlet receiver in the middle. I can remember that particular play in the Super Bowl uh, 19 with Wendell Tyler catching a ball just like that very late from Montana getting a 45 yard gain out of it. The zone defenders lose track of the man you just faked to. Then if you hit him late he's got all kinds of running room. Marino now 14 for 28, hitting 50% of his passes. One touchdown, the three intercepted. Changing the play. Underneath to Beatty and the tight end. First down at the Houston 44. In that particular play, Dan Marino knew that Lathan 57 would be covering Beatty. And so that crossing pattern, there goes Beatty, and he beats Lathan this time. Now he has to hold on to the ball. The last time, as you recall, he fumbled it. But in that particular play, he spotted the coverage and knew just where to go with the ball. Meanwhile, Tom Dooley has thrown the flag. Let's see what that's about. Roughing Marino against the Oilers. 15 more. That'll take it to the 29-yard line. You now we talked about the Marino and Clayton combination being the most successful. Johnny Unitas and Raymond Barry second with 63 and Montana to Rice 55, and of course that's still alive. Just a oh here, that's Childress and Galbraith who were involved in the, and it was uh, Ray Childress. Who apparently took a kick at Galbraith that got the 15 yard personal foul. Into the end zone, Duper. Uh, that was fading wide as uh, Jackson covering Duper one on one. Any time Reno thinks he can get man coverage from the rookie Jackson on Duper, he's going to go in that direction. Tony Page came out of the backfield, out of a wing back position, and early, early on he was open. But Marino did the right thing. He got rid of that ball. They, they can't afford now to throw the interception or knock themselves out of field goal position. They've got to get three points out of this drive. Beautiful Joe Robbie Stadium that will be the baseball home of the Florida Marlins in 1993. 
to deep center field where Miami is operating now on second and ten from the 29. Quickie. Ooh, to Clayton who tried to one hand it. I think he was expecting a hit from one of the safeties. That was a touchdown if he'd have pulled it in. He had beaten everybody in that deep defense. Now a chance to check the Hertz 10 minute ticker. Tampa Bay has scored in the third period and has uh, the Steelers have as well. New England still by one against the Vikings. Dick Not McPherson's doing a good job with that. Excellent. Patriot He's team. brought uh, structure to that organization. He's an uh, ideal man to bring back a, a sorry organization. Marino one for six on third and long. Incomplete. He had two men over there, both Tony Martin and Mark Clayton. It's just not happening. I, Dan's not himself or what he's been, at least in the last couple of weeks. And you suppose he might be trying to do too much? I mean, there's so much weight on his shoulders. I don't know. But he's uh, getting rid of the ball sometimes too early, holding in a little tone. It just isn't in sync. And he knows it. And he's a proud athlete and a great one. Then he may come up again with a big play that will make the difference, but they didn't help themselves having to kick this long a field goal. But that Stojanovic can kick him. 47 yards on this attempt. Scott secules to hold. He got plenty of it. Good again. And Miami regains the lead 13 to 10. Nearly perfect. Pete Stojanovic. He's now 12 for 13. Hi, Sam. Uh, listen, I really need to go over these numbers with you. Listen, can you hold on for a second? Some things are simply too good to be interrupted. The Legend Sedan from Acura. Hello. Sam, are you there? Sam? This is a commercial for this clever little portable CD player from Magnavox, the inventors of CD technology. I'm sorry, actually. This is a commercial for the ingenious Magnavox 13-inch TV with a built-in VCR. I'm sorry, this is really a commercial for this brilliant 52-inch TV with 100-watt Dolby surround sound. I'm sorry, wrong again. This is supposed to be a commercial for this Magnavox 386 notebook computer. Hang on, we haven't finished. Oh, I'm sorry. The ingenious products from Magnavox. They're smart, very smart. Every year, for the past 11 years, Hertz has been rated the best overall car rental company by a survey of renters. For over a decade, 19,000 renters considered car selection, reliability, cleanliness, and the quality of the company's service. For the 11th year in a row, we're America's number one way to rent a car. Hertz, we're America's wheels. Ah, a new arrival. A tire so special may last as long as you own your car. The new XH4. Congratulations. It's a Michelin. Pete Stoyanovich, third year out of Indiana. Look at he doesn't really overkick, just a nice easy follow through and 46 yards easily to give Miami the lead. There's a uh, Dumas who was his teammate with the Hoosiers. That's how old buddies say uh, how you doing. Sojanovic has kicked one 71 yards in practice. Here come the Houston Oilers. And it goes to the big back, Alan Pinkett, out to the 29-yard line, and we go to Bob Costas in New York. All right, Dick, watch some nifty running here by Blair Thomas of the Jets. Off the delayed handoff, he bursts through the hole, makes a nice move to evade a tackler, bangs into a few more and drags them for extra yardage. 23 yards down to the three, but the Jets don't get a touchdown. They settle for a 19-yard Leahy field goal lead at Indy, 17-6, early in the fourth. All right, Robert here at Joe Robbie in Miami with 4.09 left in the third period. Miami leads 13-10 after a sluggish performance, both offenses. In the first half, here in the second, each team scoring a field goal on their first possession. 
Now the Oilers turn. And Enzo White struggles to the 31, dragging three Dolphin tacklers with him. Well, as of a week ago, the, the uh, Dolphins were shredded by Kansas City with a Koye, but shredded all over the field with a running game. Today, they're coming off blocks well. They're responding well. Now, this is not the Kansas City running game, but still, Houston, early in the year, had a good running game. And there's just a dramatic difference. It's just a state of mind, I suppose. But they're doing an excellent job so far. Second and eight. Moon to Drew Hill to the 41-yard line. Drew Hill who's working toward 500 career catches this season. He started with the Los Angeles Rams, played there four years. His first catch, a touchdown from Pat Hayden. Well, Hill crossing, and Chris Green trying to stay with him, and basically Green is walled off. He can't get in there because Gibbons had taken his man up in sort of a pick play. But just those shallow crossing patterns are just... That's the strength of the run and shoot. They get people all the way over the field, and the quarterback sprinting the other way, so it's a perfect combination. And Hill and Gibbons work in the slot, the quicker players in the slot. Lorenzo White powers his way near midfield, and a good pickup on first down of seven or eight. Bobby Harden made the tackle. Well, again, the uh, three-man line, as we see it here, is giving away the run. You'll see these people in this area, you've got a lot of places to run the ball. In this case, it's going to bounce out. But they're saying, go ahead and run. We don't want you to throw. And Moon and the Oilers will take seven yards on that first down play. Ooh, thrilled as soon as he caught the ball. Michael Magruder on little Tony Jones, who may be the smallest uh, player in the NFL. Jones of the Oilers, 5'7", and he said yesterday when they were practicing in the rain with his uniform all damp, he literally was over 140 soaking wet. Well, this offense gives those kinds of guys those chances, both uh, the, the defensive backfield spots, but the wide receiver spots. Well, as Jack Pardee said, there's no position that is uh, richer, whether recruiting in college, just missed the first down, or in the NFL draft and wide receiver. There's an abundance of players. You can get a star in the fifth, eighth, ninth round. Just if you don't put a size requirement on it, and you put a speed requirement, and maybe a courage requirement, intelligence, some of those other things, but size, don't worry about it in the run and shoot. When, when I began to study Houston for this game, I saw 139 pounds written down. I knew it was a misprint, but it's true. His leg's about the size of your wrist. From the 50, third and in inches. And Moon sneaks it ahead, the necessary yard for a first down. Warren Moon, he, since it was a little kid, did not believe all the stories that he might have heard that a black man would not become a successful National Football League quarterback. There weren't many role models as he grew up in Los Angeles uh, back in the 60s, early 60s. James Harris was the first perhaps successful quarterback with the Los Angeles Rams. And Moon could have been denied many times. Folks wanted him to be... Uh, a defensive back in college he refused to accept that he said all along he told us he knew he could make it on a major college level and he could become an NFL quarterback took a circuitous route but he's a terrific player and proved his point well underneath Ernest Gibbons a pick up short three and a half four yards Bobby Harden with the tackle well, Moon having to attend junior college, which in California is not uncommon. A lot of great quarterbacks have come out of the junior college system, community college system. But West Los Angeles Junior College is a two-year school. The coaches wanted him to remain there two years. I was a junior college player once myself. I can recall the coach wants you for both years, and he had to sneak film out to send it around because he wanted to leave after that one. He wanted to get a, a shot. And he went to the University of Washington, and then didn't figure he'd be a high pick in the NFL, so took off to the Canadian League where he started with Edmonton. Now at age 34, leading the Oilers, Lorenzo White. 
White jerseys at the 42 yard line. It'll be third down and about two. And there's the gun, the end of the third quarter here in Miami with the Dolphins in front, 13 to 10. Tonight on Erie, Indiana, Simon's little brother gets zapped into a mummy movie. But then, where's the. <laughs> Erie, Indiana, NBC Tonight. Gee, it sure is dark in here. Oh, oh, for me? I'm all choked up. They're celebrating my birthday for a whole month at Crystal with three special combo meals for only $2.89 each. And with each meal, you get a piece of my birthday cake free. So head to Crystal for my birthday. This party was your idea, wasn't it, George? Oh, Our operating companies were the companies that started it all. Back then, people thought that electricity was just something to light a bulb or maybe run a fan. We've helped generate a better way of life. We've powered the American dream. Almost everything you can think of that's connected now with better ways to work, better ways to live, is powered by electricity. Just think about it. DHL was making express deliveries overseas before Federal Express was even in business. With a head start like that, we can simply do things others can't. DHL, faster to more of the world. The War with the Queen, round two. Now it can be told. And our Miller Genuine Light 10-minute ticker. New Orleans still going for 7-0. Seattle in the driver's seat at Pittsburgh going into the fourth period. Uh, Casey's kicked a field goal there. Jets still leading 17-6. And uh, no score. Except for a field goal by Ravaze for Minnesota in the third period of Minnesota. Here we open the fourth quarter. Kimberg with Bill Walsh. And uh, it's T.J. Turner. Leaning offside for Miami as the Dolphins lead favored Houston 13 to 10. The referee's microphone not working, but there was quite apparent offside against Miami. Well, Moon is handling his snap count. You see his head, Bob? Just right. Not quite illegal, but his head moved and he got Turner to move. Moon, no touchdowns today. Intercepted three times. He's 14 for 25. He opens the fourth quarter in Miami territory at the 37. First down. Through the hands of Lorenzo White. And those are the good and bad days of football because White was wide open. Moon had set it up. And it appears that Moon put too much on the ball and White didn't see it quickly enough. It's really critical inside that the receivers see the ball. And that ball was thrown right over the lineman's head. So White didn't have but an instant to find it and catch it. Second and ten. Moon still calls his mother in Los Angeles to receive sage advice. Said he called her this past week. Getting concerned about his contract. He said it's starting to eat at him. He'd like to have that thing cleaned up during the season. Wide open Gibbons, and he's got it for what might be another first down. The whistle had not sounded, so Gibbons gets up and runs. Now the whistle marks it dead at the 27-yard line. Well, Bobby Harden almost got back in there to make that play. Miami's doing an excellent job with Harden lurking in there, but you see the ball thrown. Now he breaks for it, and it's really a tight play. Very tight. Well, he just did brush with Gibbons. That was a very alert play by the six-year veteran wide receiver bouncing to his feet and running into the end zone. And for all the uh, records that Moon will finally have, and for all the, all the distinction he'll have as a football player, the six years at Edmonton, if you, add, if you were to add those kinds of yards to the NFL, just assuming that maybe the first year or two he didn't play much, he would be way up there. 
in be yardage. Right Fran and, Tarkenton, and and right up, right up there. Forty-six thousand yards, about. So it's a different league, a different kind of competition. Uh, but in a sense, he he uh, established himself in the Canadian Football League, won championships, and it gave him the experience to come down into the NFL and and right away become a great player. But it also took five years, at least five of those six years, out of the record books for the NFL. He said he loved Edmonton. He said he thought he'd stay there the rest of his uh, pro football life. But had so much success five championships he said I've got to go prove myself in the NFL so junior college to Washington to the Canadian League to the NFL an interesting route Moon sneaks it ahead first down at the 25 yard line well he played in what was it Baldwin Hills that area of Los Angeles no his uh, uh, defensive uh, end was eight years old James Lofton the guy that uh, you yeah I coached had at James Stanford. what a great player he was but as a young guy, uh, I, I don't I don't believe that was tackle football, but as in a recreation league, uh, those guys all developed and any number of them became uh, great college players and great pros. A trailing by three, Moon faces first down at the 25. Impatient with a short stuff, goes to Drew Hill for a five-yard gain. Tackled by the rookie Chris Green, picked up. There was no fumble. The ground created the loose ball. Those crossing patterns we keep reminding people of. Now, Moon has the arm to throw back. He'll, he'll sprint left, then pivot, and throw right. And uh, bless his heart, Chris Green is trying to stay with that stuff. And as a rookie, he's really challenged. Here he's got a guy that's played 12 years and knows just what he's doing. And Chris Green is uh, not a rookie, but he's a young enough player. He hasn't seen those kinds of patterns. So it's been the inside men running those short crossing patterns, Hill and Givens, that Moon has gone to most frequently. Jeff Jeffries, who had 40 catches coming in, has been more quiet today, only two. And there is Jeffries. Who runs well after the catch, and he apparently has another first down before being corralled by Lewis Oliver and J.B. Brown. It's just a hitch pattern, sprinted up the field. As soon as Moon saw that single coverage out there with Brown covering, he just sprinted through. Brown came up a little slow, but he does make a good tackle. He does not let Jeffries split people and make, make uh, the extra yards. But, Dick, in this part of the field now, it gets more and more to... Miami's advantage because that inline, the end of the end zone, limits where those receivers can go. They can play them a lot tighter now. At the 14-yard line, 12 minutes left in the fourth period. Houston going for the lead. It's Lorenzo White. And he picks up a good chunk on first down to the seven-yard line before Lewis Oliver can come up from that strong safety to make the hit. Oliver's a little late getting there. Uh, and this was where he'll improve. But the play got all the way to Oliver without anybody touching White. And it's an excellent job by Munchak, who just came back to play today. Uh, he did a fine job of controlling Reichenbach. Beautiful job of controlling him so White could split the difference. And what is a surprisingly low score. Miami by three in the fourth. White stopped at the five-yard line. That'll be a yard shy of a first down, depending on the mark. Uh, that was an interesting alignment by Miami. They gave Houston a huge hole over the left side, figuring that Moon would audible a run into it. And meanwhile, Lewis Oliver was sneaking into the hole. So it was very interesting that they'd give him a big hole to run into. And you'll see that Oliver's right there to make the stop. They invited him to audible a run. Third and one. Fifteenth play of this drive by the Oilers. White again. And 
he has the first down to the two-yard line. Oliver, the tackler, once more for Miami. Well, he had to play for the quarterback sneak. He had no choice. Moon's made two first downs coming into the, into the line from the quarterback spot, so everybody had to play in for that, and they extended it and handed the ball off wide to uh, White. Good job of cutting back through the tackle of Jarvis Williams, and Oliver secures him just inside the two. The Houston offense, second best in the NFL coming into this weekend. Miami's defense, second from the bottom in the NFL. But the Dolphin defense has been tough, and Houston has yet to score an offensive touchdown today. On first and goal, Moon, touchdown, Curtis Duncan. Duncan's fourth touchdown grab of the year. And Houston has the lead. Just had him singled up out there on the one-yard line. So he comes inside Magruder, starts out, breaks in, and Magruder couldn't get his hands on him quick enough to slow him down. So Moon is uh, so sharp, throwing that ball low and away from the defender. One-yard touchdown for Warren Moon. His 11th touchdown toss of the season, and Howfield's try for point is good. And for the first time, the flag is down. For the first time today, the Oilers have scored on offense, other than a field goal. Looks like one of those tack on the penalty kickoff. We have illegal use of the hands, number 54 on the defense. The point was good. We will penalize on the kickoff. E.J. Jr. with the foul. Houston will have a short kickoff, leading 17-13 in the fourth. For those of you looking for the big taste of Miller Genuine Draft in a light beer, we proudly present Cold Filtered Miller Genuine Draft Light. Also available in 12 ounce sizes. It's about style. It's about power. It's about control, the security of standard anti-lock brakes. It's about $12,000. The all-new Grand Am Sports Sedan. Excitement with purpose. You got it with three. Pizza or cheeseburger? Domino's, just what you want. Nobody knows, like Domino's. Domino's Pizza's Bacon Cheeseburger Pizza Feast. A medium pizza piled high with ground beef, bacon, and an extra layer of cheese. Nobody knows, like Domino's. We don't make your pizza till you make your call. So call for a Bacon Cheeseburger Pizza Feast. Now just $8.99, two for $12.99. Nobody knows, like Domino's. How you like pizza at home? NBC Sports coverage of the National Football League is brought to you by Domino's Pizza. Call Domino's Pizza right now, and you'll be enjoying a hot, delicious pizza when the game is over. Bright sunshine. You saw the lights on. That uh, from earlier in the day, uh, from 12.30 to 1, we had a thunderstorm. A lot of rain fell before game time. They turned the lights on and have kept them on, but it's been uh, brilliant Florida sun since. What a drive. 71 yards. Took almost 10 minutes. Moon finally with a touchdown is... 20th straight game throwing a touchdown pass one yard to Duncan and it's the others in front the long kick into the end zone because Howfield was kicking off from the 45 yard line the penalty on the extra point and we have a timeout. The all new Pontiac Grand Am. You can own it for its new overhead cam power. Its driver's interior. It's standard anti-lock brakes. And you can own it for under $12,000. The new Pontiac Grand Am. Excitement with purpose. 
those figures for the meeting? You don't like them? Some things are so reliable, they seem invisible. Confusing, right? They're fine. For the last nine years, Canon has been the number one choice for copiers of uncompromising quality. No, really, tell me. You can tell me. They're fine. I'm your friend. Tell me. And if you haven't noticed, that's exactly how it should be. <laughs> We're not friends anymore. From compact to advanced digital color to high-speed copying systems, the choice is Canon. Call 1-800-OK-CANON. -OK There's a big sense of pride in owning a company. I think customers have noticed the change in the company and the change in us. We've got this 24-hour hotline in case something happens while you're out on the road. If you're in a hurry, we've added extra buses to get you in and out fast. We want to make sure that our customers see uh, that we can provide them with the type of service that they expect and deserve. We love to make people happy. That's a part of our business, keep you coming back. We want to see them back at our counter again many times. So why rent from anyone but an owner? NBC Sports coverage of the National Football League is brought to you by Pontiac and your local Pontiac dealer. We build excitement. By the big taste of Miller Genuine Draft Light. Big draft taste comes to life. By the employee owners of Avis, we try harder. And by Canon, America's number one choice for copiers of uncompromising quality. How's your heart, Bill? Speaking of tickers, the Miller Genuine Light 10-minute ticker. 23-7, New Orleans over Tampa Bay. Seattle leads Pittsburgh 20-7. The Jets still in front of the Colts. And New England Look at, that. at home up by seven against the Vikes. That's two teams going in opposite directions. Minnesota, New England. Those big fans, boy, it's, this is the time of the game in the heat and humidity of Florida where Miami traditionally under Shula would wear down their opponents, be so tough late, and they're going to have to be today to win their fourth game of the year. They trail 17-13. Lots of time for Marino, and it's broken up by Jackson, intended for Mark Duper. Well, Marino waited too long to throw, then Jarvis Williams uh, entered this scene from the safety spot. There are two people uh, running uh, collision courses to Duper. Now you see him come in, now watch Jarvis Williams attack that play. There it is. Was oh, that Orlando that came into it? I had the wrong... <laughs> the right number. He came off you the had side. The right, you had the right number, 26. Second and 10 for Moreno. Cross back screen to Sammy Smith. Has to run over his own blockers. The blockers didn't move out and do much, and so Smith had to run up their back, and Sean Jones finally made the tackle short of the first down. That's a tough spot to call that play. Now, Dan Marino's going to roll out and get as much width to his right that he can, but Jones just isn't going to be fooled. That's all there is to it. And he's just right in the middle of the blockers and everybody else. Well, here's a, one of the most intelligent players in the league, Sean Jones, in the offseason in Beverly Hills, California. He'll do some investment planning for you. Marcus Allen, his former teammate, one of his clients, he says, uh, hold on to your money. Keep it on the sidelines. Wait till next year before you go big into the stocks. That was the tip we got yesterday. Deflected out of the hands of Mark Clayton by the omnipresent Chris Dishman. And Marino and the Dolphins run out of downs. That ball was thrown late, thrown too hard, and Clayton tried to run before he caught it. Now, that's not very good. That little tiny short three-yard pass, the ball bounced off his pads before Dishman even made a play on it. Well, Dishman is having a terrific season, and he's looked good again today. Hasn't come up with the interception, but certainly was involved in a couple deflections. Roby gets a high floater. Ernest Gibbons at the 20. Tripped up as he hits the 30, a 10-yard return. And we have a timeout, 8-13 remaining in the fourth quarter. The Oilers with the ball and the lead. SSEI, a higher level of luxury and confidence.
People love the convenience of fax machines. What most of us don't like are funny paper faxes that curl up and are hard to read. That's why Xerox makes more kinds of plain paper fax machines than anyone else for documents that are easy to read and a pleasure to handle because they're on good old plain paper. Plain paper fax machines from Xerox, the way to put it together. Putting it together. Faxing, scanning, copying, printing. Xerox, the document company. For those of you looking for the big taste of Miller Genuine Draft in a light beer, we proudly present Cold Filtered Miller Genuine Draft Light. Also available in 12 ounce sizes. The explosive Fighting Irish have ignited the scoreboard in 1991, averaging over 40 points a game at home. Next Saturday, Lou Holtz and company battle the Trojans of Southern Cal in the nation's oldest intersectional rivalry, the Fighting Irish, USC. Notre Dame football is home on NBC. Back in Miami, and Ernest Givens on that punt return still down, and uh, hopefully less serious than it looks. He's been battling... Uh, what appeared to be cramps all this second half. Little turn. Well, it seems to be I think not favoring anything there, Bill. Must be a muscle pull or a muscle cramp. And he's uh, back in the on the on the field, and you're bound to aggravate it sooner or later. So a reminder that next week here on NBC, it's our turn at offering you a doubleheader, and here's the lineup. The early game after NFL Live at 12:30 will feature. The Bengals, Sam White's team goes to Houston. Oh, they like each other so much, those two teams. Uh, that always produces some uh, extra sparks. And then at 4 o'clock, most of you will see that long-standing rival, the Steelers and the Browns from Cleveland. San Diego will be in Seattle at the King Dome and Denver, New England, our doubleheader next Sunday on NBC. I don't think there'll be a lot of rhetoric out of Cincinnati before they head down this time. Could be tough on them. Well, after the offense for Houston had eight possessions, no offensive touchdowns in the first half, or scores for that matter, then we'll hear in the second half a field goal and a touchdown in their only two possessions, and they send Lorenzo White off tackle for five. It really is hard to believe that uh, Miami can hold this potent offense to one touchdown offensively. It really is. And, and whereas uh, last week they just were non-existent against Kansas City. Now, maybe it's the styles of football, but I just think they're tougher inside this week, much tougher, much more physical. Doing it without John Offerdahl, their perennial all-pro linebacker. On second and five, Moon, with pressure on, has to unload incomplete to Jeffries. It was Bobby Harden who's been playing that spy position who shot through to put pressure on Moon. Well, it was a delayed blitz. He sat for just a second, allowed the Houston uh, blockers to pick their man up, then all of a sudden flashed through. And we didn't have a good shot of him there, but he waited just long enough to appear as though he wasn't blitzing. That brings up third and five. Here but we can see it. On the other hand, look at Moon's quickness in getting rid of a ball. A lot of quarterbacks would have been flat on their back with a ball in their hand. Moon and the Oilers 5 for 10 on third down today, but four of the last four. Deflected incomplete. And it was Harden again. What a game for Bobby Harden, who starred at Miami with the Hurricanes. He might be their most valuable player. Well, it was really a great job by Brown at the top of the screen covering his man. That's the person that Warren Moon wanted to throw to, to the left, to Jeffries. And so as he came back inside, all heck broke loose because there was a pass rush, and of course there was Harden again. So with 7.23 left in the fourth quarter, Miami will get the ball. They have all their timeouts left. Both teams do. Montgomery sends a spinner out of there to Scott Miller. And Miller, a little wide receiver, out of bounds at the 23-yard line. And a timeout. Miami with the ball. 
working to be the best they can be. Teammates sponsored by the U.S. Army. As backfield mates in Miami, Jim Kick and Larry Zonka were nearly inseparable. Close friends, both on and off the field, Kick was a fine runner, receiver, and blocker, helping Zonka reach the Hall of Fame. Zonka returned the favor, blocking for Kick. A relationship so close, they became known as Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. Teammates in life who made the Dolphins the best they can be. I can't tell you how it feels when you're way out there on your own tracking the bad guys. How it feels leading a skilled team that's the eyes and ears of the whole outfit. When all your training is coming alive. But finding those tanks and telling the air cavalry right where to hit them. I can tell you exactly how that feels. The temperature never drops below Xerox. That's very important to remember, especially at a time like this, when it's very deserted and very cold. Ah, you did remember Xerox antifreeze. The temperature never drops below Xerox. With more than seven minutes to go, Houston with a four-point lead, but the Dolphins have the ball. Dick Enberg with the Super Bowl champion coach Bill Walsh and his retirement game, that last Super Bowl of three right here on this field. You told us once you don't really remember much about all the surroundings that just all exploded on you. No, there's just so much noise and, and uh, pandemonium going on. Plus that, you're concentrating on what you're doing on the field so the game could be played in Nome, Alaska, and you wouldn't worry about it. You had decisions to make. But this place was alive, Dick. It really was. And that last touchdown over in that end zone, I'll never forget. But you, you kept a secret that you were going to retire. When did you really decide that that was your last game? Well, I had decided a, a while before that. But then I began to reconsider when we made that <laughs> touchdown. <laughs> you would like to say, let's, why, let's why think. Why not keep going? DeBartolo's, uh, let's think this over once again. Yes. All right. Miami goes to work. Marino guns it. Incomplete, almost intercepted by Bo Orlando. Dan is just throwing that ball down that middle into the free safeties. Now, there was every, every, the defensive team, the Oilers had a much better chance to get the reception than the Dolphins. Look at that ball at the last second, thrown right in through that crowd of people. And it very well should have been an interception. Now, this I just haven't seen from Dan Marino. I really haven't. Johnny Meads might have been uh, the man who deflected the ball slightly in front of the intended receiver. So since it doesn't seem to be open down the middle, uh, are you surprised he doesn't throw more out? He's got to be throwing shorter patterns, crossing patterns, outlet patterns. Marino scrambling. A rare run by Marino and a first down at the 35 with Jeff Alm on his back for the tackle. He knew what he had to get to. Crowd loved that. Well, the contain on his right side just collapsed in there. Just collapsed, and he was ready to make it. Fuller took a big chance going inside to get a sack, and Marino just jumped outside that pass rush. Boy, the way Marino was tackled there and pinned over, that uh, was scary for a moment, but he's okay, and the crowd loved the fact that he ran for 11. In trouble. Flips the ball incomplete, and that will not be grounding. They're going to call that a legal pass. It was a little underhand shovel, but he had a man very close as William Fuller about to make the sack. A year ago, this by the new rule, uh, this is not grounding the ball, but a year ago, they had to call him for being sacked right there. But now he just gets rid of the ball. And he uh, had Sammy Smith close enough. But Sammy Smith was wide open, Dick. That's, that's the point. Uh, two or three times earlier, he'd outlet pass to to uh, his, his backs, Higgs, Smith, and he waits too long on that first receiver trying to make the big play. There's plenty of time in the game to win it, plenty of time. 6.15 to go on the fourth. Marino wide open, over the middle is Tony Page. Twenty six yards to the fullback Johnny Meads number ninety one will be unable to cover page it looks as though he slips and trips or possibly page made a good move you see me slipping and fall that was the difference page started outside and me me got his 
legs caught up and fell. We called Page a fullback. That's what he is, but he's playing more like an H-back this year, isn't he? Sort of the tight end spot. Yeah, he'll get up there to block and then occasionally be a receiver. First down from the 39, off play action. Comes it off to Page. And Tony Page, who was a roommate of the Bills' Bruce Smith at Virginia Tech, rumbles for a few more. He faked to Page. He faked the trap play to, pa to Page. And Page was really the third option for Dan Marino. He looked down the field for Clayton, and he looked into the flat for Smith, and he hit Page late. Oh, Doug Smith appears to be injured on the play and holding that right hand. And you can see Tony Page very careful after the tackle how he extracted himself from Doug Smith and uh, when players are involved in that close contact and they feel someone really is seriously injured they well know and Paige may have given us a tip that that was a bad one. After my accident they advanced my insurance benefits and built me a ramp and got me back on my feet. This business. Our people really care. It meant a lot to us. It was the global telecommunications link-up they built. Saved the negotiation. We built this business to build your dreams. Let's look at that play again. 99, Doug Smith eventually will, from behind, get his arm caught underneath the pile. And they're still working on the 300-pound defensive tackle who's having his best ever year in this his seventh season from Auburn. Well, it was uh, well done by Miami uh, with basically Sammy Smith, the primary receiver, then very late throwing the ball to Page, who he faked to originally. There's a good sign. You saw Doug Smith moving his arm and his wrist, so it appears that the fear is maybe there might have been a fracture uh, are somewhat alleviated, although he's not yet off the field. You know, Doug Smith is, well, we'll get to the Doug Smith story in a moment. I guess we have a ticker coming up here, so let's check other scores on the Miller Genuine Draft Light 10-minute ticker. Well, with, the Cra Seattle. with Craig uh, healthy, Seattle's a factor. They can come back like they did a year ago. The Colts still winless. The Jets have won. They go four and four, and that's a team the Miami Dolphins are watching closely. They're going to be in a battle, one would think, uh, for a possible playoff, one of those wild cards uh, with Buffalo uh, storming here in the east. Sorry to mention that Doug Smith, you talk about a bad year. Last year, he was shot in the right leg in a confrontation. His five-year-old son was struck by a hit-and-run driver, okay, and his wife almost suffered a miscarriage during the sixth month of their pregnancy. They all got through that. All right, and then this year, it's almost a rededicated Doug Smith playing his best ever football. But it'll take Smith to get the Oilers to the Super Bowl because he can, that added dimension of him inside there really clogs up that middle. With less than five minutes to go, second and three. Sammy Smith outside. And a first down at the Houston 24. Smith, not related to either Doug or Sammy, made the tackle. Again, the play was forced outside because Childress and Aim coming up the middle almost cut the whole play off. So they are dominating inside, but again, bouncing all the way to the sideline and using your foot speed to get those extra few yards. Good news for Boiler fans. Doug Smith back in. Uh, Dan cannot make a mistake here. That's very evident. But he can't wing that ball down in there and hope for the best. He has to execute. Stays on the ground. And a good hole for Sammy Smith. Five yards to the 19. Al Smith, who played at Cal Poly Pomona before going to Utah State, made the tackle. That was Richmond Webb and Tony Page. Webb, Webb right at the point of attack. He turned Jones out, and there was the hole. 6'6 six, six and 298. Here's a sharp that you know Dick surprisingly two of the brightest guys on the field would be Sean Jones and Richmond Webb playing against each other. Why is that surprising. Well they're big guys you don't think you can be that big and that smart and they are. They've got the whole package those two matched against each other today. At the four minute mark Marino to Duper to the one yard line. 
They're on their feet now at Joy Robbie. That's vintage Marino, a slant pass to the inside by Duper. Look at that ball right up over the shoulder. Beautiful shot. And there's a great receiver in Duper. He has been for many years making the clutch catch. Well, what a tough catch off the fingertips. Juggles and holds at the 1, 18 yards on the play. Duper's third catch today. And the Dolphins are a yard away from regaining the lead with 3.21 to go. They may be reviewing this to see whether or not uh, Duper got in. Well, what an excellent drive. They've just mixed everything up. It's a much, much better Dolphin team emotionally than they have been in recent weeks. Well, it's a credit to Shula and his coaches to rally them after that disaster in Kansas City. Look at that shot right inside. Beautiful. That's a tough call. He's holding the ball. The veteran knowing that the goal line's there. He wanted the touchdown. Down at the one, but was the ball on the goal line when he went down? I think his rear end was on the ground before anything else. So his rear right end is there. down there. Then he lead, then yeah. he reaches. Yeah. Excellent call by the official. Good placement. So they work on the rookie, Steve Jackson. And Jackson was in pretty good shape. It's just that ball gets there so quick when Marino's on target. Dishman now on his back in the end zone, stretching a leg. And here's another look at Duper down there. Then he reaches. So that was not a touchdown. You see it. Now, Dishman just stretching perhaps that hamstring that uh, he's been carrying the last couple of weeks. So it's first and goal Miami with 3.21 to go. They might, it might just by chance be better if they don't score for a couple of downs and take time off that clock. Naturally, they're not thinking of it that way. That's Jim Jensen in motion. Sammy Smith fumbles again. Oh, my. Just like last week against Kansas City and the... Houston Oilers have recovered for the touchback. Oh, my. Was he over the goal line before he lost the ball? There's got to be a replay. Did he have control when he went over the goal line? No signal. No one on the field thought it was a touchdown. And for those of you who saw the game last week in Kansas City, Smith fumbled and it went 100 yards See, the other he way. He has the ball right now. Nope, he lost it. Lamar oh. Lathan got his helmet right into the ball. Much has happened against the Chiefs. The Chiefs took it 100 yards for a touchdown. This one is a touchback, Houston. There it is, stripped out at the one-yard line by the second-year man from the University of Houston, Lamar Lathan. He makes the big play. How can that happen two weeks in a row? He's got to have both hands on the ball. He doesn't protect it. He doesn't keep his pads down. Now, that's inexcusable, and that cost him a ball game. And there's the man. Dishman keeps his string alive. That's six straight games he has had either an interception or a fumble recovery. Now the helmet into the ball. Helmet right into the ball. Ninth turnover today. The first in the second half is the critical one. And now Houston will try to run out the clock. White tripped up after a one-yard gain. Jeff Cross made the stop. Oh, poor Sammy Smith. Four Dolphins after that effort. You've got to figure it out from the week before doing that for 100 yards. This cost him the ball game. And he, Don Shula, as he talked to us yesterday, said, I wondered, why did he even call it last week? Now, what must he be wondering? Teenagers are three times more likely to die driving at night than during the day. Kid? Kid? With me, kid? Talk to your teenager about serious driving issues. Kid! Before someone else has to do the talking. Someone call the parents. Sammy Smith third year out of Florida State. Boy, just uh, how do you even explain that to yourself? Two weeks in a row on the goal line, fumbling the ball. One was a 14-point play as Kansas City took the fumble 100 yards the other way, and this one may have cost the Dolphins the game. The one last week in Kansas City was when the Miamis trailed only 7-0. 
but certainly set the tone for the game. Moon on second and nine, a little safety valve to White. Trying for first down yardage, tackled at the 28, where it'll be third and two, and here comes a big defensive play for the Dolphins who spend their second time out. They have to stop Houston here and get the ball, trailing by four, less than three to go. If your face were square, shaving would be simple. If your face were flat, any razor would do. But your face has curves. You need the revolutionary Schick Tracer, the first razor with a blade that flexes to trace every curve on your face. Compared to other razors, Tracer puts more of the blade edge against your skin. For real faces, just like yours. Tracer from Schick traces every curve on your face. Dan Marino hoping the defense can hold the much maligned Miami defense, deservedly so. They've just not played well in stopping the opposition, but today against today, a powerful Houston team, they've been good. Been fine. They've been fine today. Uh, there's an excellent drive to, to win the game, and, and there's no excuse for that fumble. It's that simple. You know, I'm sure, Don, there isn't any excuse. You because can't it carry happened it a week ago, Dick. Yeah, I mean, he did it a week ago. He didn't protect the ball. A third and two. Dolphins dig in. It's a pass, and that'll be good enough for the first down, as Pat Coleman has only his third catch of the year, a rookie from Mississippi. Well, that demonstrates the trust they have in Moon throwing in that situation and using his good judgment. If he drops that ball in there, there could have been a problem, but that's where that's the difference with Moon and other quarterbacks. This and guy can do it in the clutch. And Miami does not spend the third time out, so that means a full 35-plus seconds will click off to the two-minute timeout. It's too far to let it run. You don't want to let it run that many seconds. We won't ever get those back. See Pardee and the coach are saying, Warren, let it go. So they have one timeout left. It'll be first down at the 36. The Oilers in command looking for a 6-1 start in 1991. Alcoa presents Fantastic Finishes, Super Bowl 23. With 310 remaining, the 49ers will have to go from their 8-yard line. There is a lot staring them in the face. And the 49ers stared it all down. 11 plays later, they were 10 yards from a title. 39 seconds remaining. Back to throw Montana. Stepped up, throws. Touchdown! Recycling aluminum beverage cans can help save money since they're worth more at recycling centers and at curbside pickup. Save energy since they have more recycled content. They save landfill space since more than 63% of all aluminum cans made are recycled. Yes, recycling aluminum cans saves more of a lot of things, which helps save one more thing. Aluminum beverage cans. Why in the world would you buy anything else? Warren Moon into the flat and a good play made by the Miami defense on Drew Hill to push him out of bounds. J.B. Brown, as you saw, uh, the time down to 201, Houston miscalculated and uh, took a five-yard delay of game penalty. And now this is the two-minute timeout. It's at the 41-yard line. Uh, pick up about 10 yards in the pass. It'll be second and five. Just the freaks of the game, the situation where you... Uh, Basically, of all, all but concede the game, and somebody fumbles. This will this will be Bill the best start for Houston since they opened six and one in 1975 when Bum Phillips was the headmaster in Houston. So, with the two-minute warning, this timeout. The new supercharged Pontiac SSEI. Comfort without compromise. Performance without penalty. Excitement without apology. Pontiac SSEI.
Well, Moon will throw. Moon will throw in these situations. Typically, a team will keep it on the ground, but Moon will take a chance on an incomplete pass that would stop the clock. But their passing game is so good, and he says to heck with it. He'll throw the ball in these situations. There's two passes now, and typically you'd run the ball and uh, you let the clock run. Executive producer of NBC Sports, Terry O'Neill. Today's game has been directed by John Gonzalez, produced by John Ferratzis. And our thanks to our help in the booth, Slingshot Snyderman, Harry Von Suckle, Terry Brumfield, and all men and women here in the heat of Miami covering the Oilers. And the Dolphins in Houston is one first down away from locking this one up. Only one timeout left for Miami. The Dolphins first and goal at the one here in the final minutes only to see Sammy Smith cough up the ball for the second straight week. Mm. Second and five. Oops. Alfred Oglesby. Offside. And while they sort it out, a lot of finger pointing who did what to whom. New Orleans is now 7 0. Seattle goes 4 and 4. The Jets are 4 and 4. And New England still leads by 3. As uh, what would have to be categorized as the surprising Patriots could be 3 and 4 at the end of today ahead of Miami. It's just a case. As, as with New England, of just being well organized and everybody knowing their role and concentrating. He took a, an awful, awful team and it become competitive just in a few months. Yeah, that first down on the penalty for Houston should lock it up. Four more downs for the Oilers. One timeout left. White protects the ball. The Dolphins should spend their final timeout right here. 150 to go and three plays and they allow with the 45 second clock three plays uh, just about to get it done for uh, Houston. And Dick I'm sure that Don Shul is just in a state of shock. Uh, Tom Olivadotti standing next to him. The fine job his defense did. Excellent job turning it around in a week. Really right. unfortunate. Every time I see the commercials and use uh, the two words Old Spice, uh, that's the first cologne that I ever used as a kid. You know, that, when you really shave, the Old Spice NFL Live postgame report. Is, does uh, Costa shave yet? Did, did, did we should shave? send a bottle to each of these. Uh, they've fellas. got all mm -hmm. kinds. They're standing by. They'll give you all the scores, all the highlights, hairy as it may be. And for the Houston Oilers, they're going to leave uh, Florida with a very hard-earned win at defense uh, Miami Dolphins that just uh, found itself this week against a very tough offense second best in the NFL the best offense passing in the NFL and the Dolphin defense did their job but uh, when they had the opportunity to win it that uh, cancer of the game the fumble showed up for Miami. Lorenzo White powers to the Miami 47 yard line and now 45 seconds will tick away. Do you, you think that that's just too much at this stage of the game that and I know what they try to do and in, instead of the 30 seconds between play just it's automatic 45 just seems like an awful lot of time. Well to let the I, I, team I'm sure at this point Don Shuler would agree with that because the game is just draining away from him after a great effort possibly the best game Miami has played all year I would say most likely certainly the best defensive effort and uh, he's just must be sick because you can isolate it to one person and that's really unfortunate Moon letting that full 45 tick away three two one barely got the snap off in time and a flag goes down And now let's take a look at today's Canon camcorder replay of the game. And this will be one that uh, Dolphin fans would rather not see yes. again, but certainly be played over and over again as Sammy Smith takes a helmet from Lamar Lathan. The ball squirts out. Houston's Chris Dishman recovers in the end zone to save an apparent Houston victory. That's not how you do it. You don't have that ball exposed out there to somebody's helmet to knock it out, especially when a week before you blew it. Hugh Green was the Dolphin offside on the play and that 
gives the Oilers another first down. And to clean up uh, our final piece of business here, the employee owners of Avis Salute, the game's MVP, Chris Dishman. It's been an MVP defensive season for that cornerback of the Oilers. He's the winner of the We Try Harder Award today. Avis, the official car rental company of the NFL. And now with 55 seconds left, it's just a kneel down time for Warren Moon. And the Oilers go six and one, one of the top teams of the American Football Conference. Again, they seem so much more devastating under that dome in Houston than they are on the road, but they survived today. As you see, the men and women, Terry O'Neill, the Johns, Ferratsis, and Gonzalez, who produce and direct our coverage, Will Belke, our associate director, and all the rest, Jerome Ingram, our production associate. Well, Houston, if they got a home field or home dome advantage, they could be a Super Bowl team. Now, outdoors in bad weather, I, I couldn't guarantee anything. But indoors, in the dome, they can be tough. Now, it's going to be a battle, Buffalo and Houston and the AFC for that honor, it would appear at this stage of the season. So the final seconds tick away, and the Houston Oilers have survived in Miami today, just as they did in New York a week ago beating the Jets it's Moon and the Oilers 17 to 13 as Jack Pardee goes home with